Okay. He sounds sexy. <laughs> All right. That's the case, then we can definitely get on with the show today. Uh, it's gonna be a little uh, different. Gathering. Yeah, in a way. Different, definitely different because uh, we do have a gacha game right off the bat to talk about because they are collaborating with a fighting game of, of a certain uh, popular franchise. So we'll get to that. But before we do that, this is two, uh, 282, 282 of the Hypecast. Thank you for joining in as always. Um, oh, yeah. Ah, we just hit. Um... We just hit a Pokemon mom status. Oh, there we. We just hit. We just hit Gardevoir. Gardevoir, yes, the the internet favorite, yes. <laughs> For certain people. For certain people who go on Rule Thirty Four or maybe Four Chan, but anyway. <laughs> oh man. Oh yeah, let me go. He said it, not me. Yeah, I, no, <laughs> so he said it. I, I, I'll say it. no. I I said it. That, those are my words. Yep. But to be fair, 4chan is a pretty um, hectic place. I'm going to put it nicely, quote unquote. Anyway, so... It's it's a it's a place to just drive by and speed up. Yeah. <laughs> but, um... Pretty unhinged things go about in, the, uh, in that space. I wonder what was worse, though, back in the day. We had Zanga, then we had 4chan. I think 4chan we had is worse. But... Then we had Gaia Online. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and its forums. <laughs> yes. See, see, now you're like, you're like, oh, yeah. All right. That was the thing. <laughs> yeah. Yes, everyone, we're carbon dating our age right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure the Maple Story oh. forums were pretty bad to an extent. To an extent, yeah. I remember my first time diving into there. There was a lot of racism in there, and I was like, hey. "Oh yeah." The times were very different for sure. When mm -hmm. when we were our teenagers, for sure. God, that's like almost fifteen. Uh, who I, like fifteen uh, years ago. Fuck, man. Who are we kidding? That the worst forum was um, Neil Pitts. <laughs> <laughs> yes, wow. we go. I now carbon dated us wow. back to like six thousand years. Neopets. I haven't heard that one in, in ages. All right. All right. The tweet is out, and uh, yeah. So once again, um, before I was, uh, well, while I was in introducing or or continuing to introduce, um. This is 282. Uh, as Zawa said, we are on Gardevoir in the Pokemon numbers. And uh, um, uh, with yours truly, no, as always, crazy. yep, with yours truly, as always, Sean, aka Hawk525. Oh, yeah, let me turn on my camera for Zawa so he can, he can see me. There we go. And um, yeah, so we got stuff to talk about. Um, if it weren't for a certain drama, um, that, that this definitely would have been a little drier, but we definitely have uh, one big thing to talk about, and depending on who you are, uh, especially in the Twitch space of things. But first, mm -hmm. let's talk about Denla Zone Zero collaborating with Street Fighter um, Six, to be more specific. But I think it's just Street Fighter in general, in my opinion. But um, before we do that, oh my God, I've got I've got the 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 other important thing. Hold on. Oh. Well, first off, while I set this part up, um, mm -hmm. how excited are you when it comes to Zenla Zone Zero? It's more of well, at at the at this point, it's like um, how scared is should my wallet be? Mm -hmm. Right, right. Because it, again, it, it's another uh, what you call. It's, a, it's another gotcha game that my wall is probably not going to forgive me. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I get you. I get you. I've, I've been hearing... Well, okay. So... 
Um, I, I I guess we'll hold that off till um, we get to the actual Zenla Zone. Uh, what do you call? It? Uh, what special program that they had like very recently? Mm -hmm. But um, first and foremost, let me do this. Um, there we go. Yeah. Get the soundboard on here, and then let's do this. This battle is about to explode. All right. So, anywho, um, so for us off, yes, Un very unexpectedly, um, this was a thing, right? Um, so I took a glance at the round table. I didn't watch all of it, but from what I've gathered, there wasn't anything like brand new or anything like that for neither game. Cause, uh, you know, street fighter doesn't have any like new costumes or skins or anything like that from Zenless zone nor Zenless zone doesn't have any like immediate guest characters from street fighter or anything like that. That would, that would have been like, like big, right? People would be hopping on way, way faster than your normal, typical gotcha launch game. So yeah i mean can can you imagine like the zenless zone a zenless zone character because of this collaboration uh, collaboration was like a special like downloadable freebie for a street fighter mm -hmm. whereas it could be probably just costumes yes yeah but the round table to which a lot of, yeah wait wait, wait yeah. sorry but i was like to which like some people are just gonna be like huh like, what is this thing? Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, very unexpected. No one really thought about this was happening. Um, but when you open the can, especially when you look at in certain interviews of Zenla Zone, uh, they actually were influenced by Street Fighter as part of the design. That's why you kind of, and then you do kind of get that, I, I, or at least I do with Zenla Zone. Zenla Zone is very urban, very street, um, street based. As you can tell, because like, um, unlike Gen or unlike, yeah, unlike Genshin and Honkai Star Rail, where their worlds are very vast, right? You know, Honkai right. Star Rail, you go in space, right? It's cosmos, you know, the it's very, co um, uh, very much space based, and then Genshin is very much more, um, uh, mythical and such. You de you're dealing with gods and such, and nations, various nations. But in Zenless, uh, you're dealing with a city that's been plagued by some sort of um, phenomenon. So that's why you are only dealing with just one city thus far. But it might be the case where you're only going to be focusing mostly on one city. You know, and it'll just expand as it goes along. So you'll probably like see like different, different blocks or different uh, parts of town open up as the game updates whereas you know with every major update for el the other two hoyo games it's always like you know new region or new planet you know that kind of thing and that's a very large scale if you think about it but um but here probably just like different streets or different uh clicks or different uh you know those those parts but anyway, the the point is though is very very much on the streets, very urban, um, and, and and even even so with Street Fighter Six, um, Street Fighter Six is even more street in the fighter, right? So you know more street in, <laughs> than ever, with the with the uh, what do you call it? the graffiti and like the uh, the city life and everything, world tour, you know that stuff. Um, so I can definitely see where that influence already is coming in for Zenland Zone. You know, I would, I would even call it like cyber street punk in terms of design. Uh, do, 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 do you feel connections with Street Fighter and, and Zenland Zone? At least, at least aesthetically anyway? Not really, because when we look at Zenless Zone, like from right here, the the trailer that's mm -hmm. playing, like right now. Yes. When you say aesthetically, I'm like Street Fighter is grounded, you know, like yeah, of course, its movement are solid. Then you look at Zenless, everyone kind of moves like a wet noodle. Yeah, they're like it's like it's got those smears, you know, those smear yeah. um uh 
frames, I guess you could call them. Very um like this yeah. this would have worked if it was like like a Capcom Marvel versus Capcom, you know, three at least. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. you know it'll match with the the um, the smooth the smoothness and the blur effects and stuff. But, uh, I, I I I get what you're what you're what you're yeah. getting at, yeah. But well, I, I want to kind of see where this is going. Yeah. Because um, it, mm-hmm. it, it probably is just like a like you know like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles collab. Hopefully not that um, abysmal. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Or probably it's like you know like a simple collab. Um, dress Chun Li like one of these characters. Mm-hmm. Make Blanca look like um look like the bear mm-hmm. um guy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then on Xenosome's, um half is like you know probably a like a special event take down Ryu in a you know in a fast uh, boss boss fight mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know special boss fight yes yeah I would love to see where this goes with like skins or characters even. Um... Or even like like moves, right? Like imagine like your main character or something, um, which is either these two, right, up here, um, do like the Hadouken or something, or um, the Shoryuken or something. I don't know, you know. But yeah, yeah, I would like to see what this goes because it's like if nothing comes out of it, it's like hmm, what what was the point of that, you know? Um, Other than having a nice conversation between the two teams, because that's what what the round table was pretty much was it was just a nice conversation you know edited into like this you know um nice video or whatever it was it was like a 30 minute video too um but yeah nothing nothing like super new either from either either sides like even within zenless zone there weren't there weren't any more characters revealed than it already has where uh, same with street fighter of course they didn't reveal any more characters on their side of things too they've already done that on their end with the you know bison elena you know that and terry and my which speaking of which they're already doing another collab right you know the crossover you know so that's pretty funny um so yeah unfortunately like i said unfortunately nothing new or revelating came came out 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 of the round table other than the cool conversation if you're into that sort of stuff um, like they, they share like their f- different philosophies. They share their sort of stories. Um, like Matsumoto started off as just PR or something. He or HR, and then he moved up to being a director or producer of sorts. You know, so pretty cool on that on that end. But yeah, nothing nothing content wise thus far anyway. Yeah. So I would love to see where this goes. Like I said. Um, I also forgot to mention that not only it was inspired by Street Fighter 6, but Digimon World as well. So that too, like I kind of get because of the fashion you see with some of the Digimon characters or the human side of things too. Um, while yeah, they, t- they do take place in the digital world, they do take place in Tokyo as well or like, you know, other Japanese locations, you know. So you do see that street life as well and their clothes depending on which um series you watch or play right um i think that more specifically though it does say digimon world so i kind of do see that uh, specifically with their clothes but uh, but beyond that yeah i mean zen zone is is you know a hoyo game at the end of the day so it does have that hoyo-ness to it you know if you've played enough hoyo games um for enough time and um let me see it is coming to the xbox and switch that's another thing from the interview um and new factions will come out yeah i mean we've already seen starting to see new factions like the 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 idol group and stuff like that um and then there's like this uh biker gang looking faction with so far with like two blonde girls <laughs> they're like really young age <laughs> it's 
weird. One of them holds a bat. Um, and more. There's more characters, of course. So, um, um, yeah. Uh, any, <laughs> anything you wanted to add thus far for either two or... I mean, um, uh, when it comes to the Digimon influence, do you see that at all? Or when it comes to design? What the Digimon influence I could see from character design mm -hmm. uh, perspective, because maybe it might have been like the same artist. Perhaps. Probably like con Perhaps. Uh, the concept artist might have been someone from yeah. Digimon. I mean, who from knows? Digimon or yeah. uh, Toy Bandai. Yeah. Yeah, who knows? Uh, let me even but, just okay. Yeah. Go ahead. But it could also, but it also could be like from what Zenless Zone looks like. It's just barring or playing homage as well to like past, you know, anime styles. Because. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh, we don't wanna get Jim tonight. <laughs> <either. laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. Um. That's okay. But not like you. Like when you look at their clothes and stuff like that, yeah, you kind of kind of see like that the urban. Yeah, you kind of see the urban, and there are some Digimon series that is kind of urbanish, but then you know they just go back to like just being like kids. You know, like mm -hmm. they wear like t-shirts, mm -hmm. shorts, very basic, and, yeah, and stuff. Yeah, and of course if the one kid with the goggles, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. If I could kind of say like a franchise that might like mesh with this type mm -hmm. of um clothing let's make it easier clothing yeah probably just just that radio yeah no i i definitely can see that for sure just that radio or uh, sad to say that that studio shut down hi-fi rush mm -hmm. yeah tango yeah tango would have Probably okay. mesh mesh with this very well. Yeah, you got you can see the the cop design, and then this this is the two blonde uh girls I was just talking about with the biker gang kind of. That's me. In, that's me. That's me in the back right there. Sipping yeah, the, on sipping on <laughs> some drink. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah, but especially with this person right here, uh, I think her name is Ambie um that's like the the cyber street punk that i'm kind of like talking about yeah and of course with billy right here that's on the the guys on the right um billy kid yeah, yeah. he's he's like yeah he's definitely like you know a uh, full-on cy cyborg you know so uh but what are you sorry what are you saying he uh what are you saying about billy uh, uh you before you said kid i was like billy joe oh billy joel yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> He's gonna yeah. start singing Uptown Girl. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So it's a it's an interesting mix because you do see that, but also you see like um, this faction, which is just like maids and butlers, you know. So you got kind of got that like gothic, gothic Lo uh, Lolita. Um, yeah, the Lolita um, battle mage. I mean, battle um, maids. Maids, yes. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, and then of course they're they called Victoria, so Victoria housekeeping. So then you got that Victorian sort of aesthetic touch to oh, it. Oh yeah, they they can they can do some housekeeping over here. <laughs> and I'm not talking about the maids there. Yeah, I know, about I, know, that I know, I know, <laughs> I know. You you want you want the the guy in the back? <laughs> no, I'm I'm talking about the robots the robot or the bang the bang boos already call them i think they're called bang boos the fuck sir <laughs> that's what they're called. because there's a no no the fuck, just just because there's a nice looking man right there doesn't mean i'll instantly go you know what the fuck i'm kidding mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah and then you know you got yeah. you even have a mix of like the animal stuff like this you know uh we have yeah, ellen right they're, here with the shark tail mm -hmm. yeah so this game is like hitting Mostly every fandom, yeah, in in the right way, not, in the right, it's in not the tasteful, just like, in the tasteful way, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's not just being flown there to just being flown there. It, mm -hmm. it kind of serves a uh, aesthetic, aesthetic purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of funny because like oh. with Ellen right here with the shark tail, she has like yeah. 
it looks like stickers on her on her tail like if oh yeah um i think those are uh the sponsor stickers like sponsor stickers almost yeah like something right it's, it's almost it's, it's got that you know again like that urban touch to it you know you wear there are people who just put stickers on uh like street poles and you know like light posts and such like that I just wonder to, she, yeah i wonder if she'll get mad if i put uh, put the triangles <laughs> the, the green and yellow triangle just goes smooth. oh yeah like oh the the beginner driver sticker yeah, <laughs> yeah the, <laughs> that's that's funny though what's interesting about that philosophy though is uh and you did and, and you did say um you did just mention like oh yeah it's hitting all the sort of notes right even like going as far as um the chick or the girl in the middle the little girl um she's actually inspired by uh or from uh frankenstein because you can kind of see the uh the nails or the screws or whatever oh, the bolts, the bolts. Yeah, yeah exactly the bolts. um she's actually uh, she, yeah. yeah she and um well they call her frankie in um fate in the fate series will mm -hmm. probably be best friends yes yeah they'll definitely um uh be oh, Fran. that was her name fran oh fran yes they'll be fast mm -hmm. friends yes <laughs> yeah i mean i guess you can even say um lichen li uh, lichen who's yes the, that's the the wolf man right here well yeah, yeah it might be referencing to the wolf man you know so and then she and then, i think he uh, um fuck what's his name from was it blaze blue mm, uh, the other wolf butler to um no not blaze is it blaze blue yeah blaze because it was Rachel Autocard was the Lolita vampire. Yes. And then her butler was... Um, oh, no. Well, her butler is, is, a, is basically a la carte. So... The old dude. Um, I believe it's the old dude. Please be... Uh, ben Helsing. Or... Oh, Ben Hel 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 R. Helsing. Yeah, Helsing. That's what it was. Yeah. Kind of those two will yeah. be, be yeah. like best friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And probably like checking each other, like you're doing, you're sitting up the table wrong. No, you mm -hmm. are. <laughs> yeah. And then Rena here is like the ghost girl. So you got like, you know, um, most characters are like horror themed also. Yeah, so you got, throw, yeah, you got that thrown in there as well for the maids at least. This one's kind of funny to me because um, they have like, a number of them have like Russian names, and then like a, and then you have Grace Howard, but um, they dress like um Japanese construction workers, plus a little, workers. yeah, plus a little bit of that the uh, Yankee slash, um, yeah, Bozozoku, the bad, the, yeah, the bad boys, <laughs> the bad boys in Japan, yeah, basically, kind of like mixed in there too. Yeah, you're just missing one wearing a, having a pompadour head and exactly, you know, you're yeah, they're golden. <laughs> it's like I you're wanna, golden. I, I I want a Pompadour dude coming in at, eventually. That'd be so cool. That'd be sick. So what if the Pompadour dude is not part of this gang, but it's like part of um Billy's gang? Oh yeah, and you uh, think he'll yeah, he'll right have like, yeah. he'll have the you, he'll be doing the hard R's like the hard like hurra, hurra, oh, and oh, then, yeah that oh, that <laughs> yeah yeah the hard rolling R's the rolling sorry. R's that's like called dog. rolling R's yeah. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, he goes, oh, you think he will order, but no, he's like the most calm freaking like guy ever. And you're like, wait, <laughs> mm -hmm. are you sure you're in the right group? Mm -hmm. You sound like you belong with the maids. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, um, I actually like this sort of aesthetic, um, like yeah. the baggy pants, um, the, the, you know, this guy, Anton is wearing like a jacket cape kind of thing. Yeah. So. And then, you and have it's a bear. also funny like, <laughs> when when you um, see these characters, you know, interacting and stuff. Mm. The humans, these three humans here, are so rowdy and and bumptious. Where you have Ben, the bear over there, is like, yeah. Can I can I just go home? <laughs> I, I guess I'll, I guess I have to work. Yeah, definitely these two, okay. especially Grace is like a you know like she's like a a machine freak or machine geek. Like she likes. Oh, she's mach a machinist. Mach yeah, yeah. Gearhead, there you go. She's a gearhead. 
gearhead, yeah, the kind of thing, yeah, bas yeah, basically. She she looks she sees all machines like um like babies or whatever. Like she even calls um call them like kids. And unfortunately the uh, the local localization kind of uh is um bad. bad out of context. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. Out of context is it sounds pretty bad. But anyway, um yes, yeah, so, so you have a bear, so it's like that's also adding the the interesting aesthetic to this yeah, world the, yeah the demographics demographic yes <laughs> right you know you got you got a shark you got bears you got you know wolves you know it's like it's hitting you're just a lot missing of you're just missing a fucking scaly and then you know you'd be golden yeah you, got, you, you just gotta have, have a lizard man and there you go right oh yeah of course you got the, the cat girl right you got the the machine man you know the robot dude mm. he's a cyborg but whatever you know it, it hits similar notes um oh of course you got the demon girl right you know so it's got it's yeah you have you have dante and virgil yeah, <laughs> yeah. Dante. i mean pretty much the one with the katana her it's kind of looks like yeah, her moveset is like, yeah very much it's like virgil or probably taking some liberties from that other character in um uh not honkai but in Genshin? Oh, Genshin from I I yep. Ayaka, yes. Um, I, yeah. I, yeah. Ayaka is also another ice um, swordsman using katanas and the whole Iaido sort of aesthetic when attacking, yes. That whole trope is also crossing over to here with this character here, with who, of course, also has animal ears. So <laughs> it's like, you know. Um, oh, yeah, this, this faction just got more characters kind of like teased so it's not just her anymore it's just uh there's also um a guy who appears to be let me see hold on let me let me bring up the page uh there you go um actually let me get a let me get a different uh picture say enhance yeah <laughs> enhance um where was it? Where was it? Yeah. Captain John Um. Oh, there you go. There you go. This guy also has the animal ears. Also hitting the demographic right with his ass. <laughs> Pass. <laughs> Pass. Yeah, I mean, he's got. That I don't want to go to jail. He's. Very, <laughs> I don't yeah. want to go to jail. He's very toned. He's very. He's you know handsome or whatever. He's got the the white hair right or silver hair, you know depending on how you look at it. Um, but he he appears to be like a lynx, as somebody pointed out here, because because of, of the the little ends of his ears kind of look like a lynx. So I it's so funny, like mm -hmm. his personality is like, wow, he's so stoic. He's so like, you know, ready to fight. But it's like the so opposite. He's oh, he's scared to fight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's just putting on a face. Mm -hmm. He all, all talk, no bite. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's, it's really hitting a lot of the, the demographics, right? I mean... They're um, definitely going uh, um going I in. I mean, again, like like how with the world that it is today, there there's so much demographics. If you really want to bring in new players, you're gonna have to like bring yeah, in. That's like, true. You you're gonna have to make those characters go like hit those markers. Like, mm -hmm. all right, we got we got the furry character, we got the machinists, we got the we got the cute girls, we got the cute guys. Now we just need a freaking daddy and a mommy. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, you you have the entire family tree. I think the mommy part is already covered, of course, because you know this is this is a gotcha game. But um, you have this like katana woman right here, <clears throat> along with a katana girl. <laughs> it's funny, right? Um, and then you have you have this. Like, I I, hmm. Go ahead. I want a mommy like from Genshin, that her. How she gets her weapon? She just does this. Okay, oh, the, everybody. Oh, yeah, pulls the sword from her chest. Yeah, that, that's that's Raiden. Yeah, Raiden Shogun. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. 
I uh, I kind of uh, like the policewoman, you know, with the red red streaks in her hair. I like her too, as well as um, I actually like the shark girl. Um, just like seeing a, a, a number of the uh, the trailers she, she's featured in or she appears in as like a background character. She's like she likes to sleep. She gets she's like a kind of tomboyish, um, grumpy. You know, that's 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 Hawks. Um, yeah. <laughs> my mine is just straight up from what my friends caught me. Sundares, like this fucking. But yeah, she's, apparently she, how I did. Yeah. How I described my boyfriend, my my friends were like, "Zawa, that that's a Sundare." I was like, "What? Yeah, you're describing a Sundare. That's how your boyfriend's treating you." I was like, she she appeared. Oh God. <laughs> Ellen, the short girl, uh, appears to be Tsundere, but we'll see. We'll see how uh, how the dialogue plays out and stuff like that. But anyways, um, yeah, so far, aesthetically, it does look very interesting up to this point. Okay. Yeah. And even if... It, I, yeah. But now the question is, how far along is the story? Because... Mm -hmm. Wasn't, like, Genshin, like... There was story, but then after a while, it just you just hit that brick wall, and you're like, "That's it." Mm, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go as far as that. It's just, it's basically there is a lot set up, but right now it's like, "All right, we're go. We're ready to go to the next region." Like, come on, you know, kind of thing. Oh, it's it's like, ah, yeah, ah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, all right, we're getting. Like it. you see the bridge mm -hmm. to go to the next the next zone, but it's just slowly being built, like one mm -hmm. plank. Mm -hmm. a day yeah so one plank a day <laughs> yeah yeah we're all we're all ready for a new region already because we're we're at that point we're, we're uh because we're like two no i'm sorry 4.7 which means yeah it's they're supposed to be um getting ready for the new region yeah yeah we're getting close to 5.0 so yeah, exactly uh which yeah. now because um I'm gonna drop kick that doll a little bit. <laughs> the game is coming out, I believe, what next week already? Yes, it's coming out the fourth of July. In fact, uh, of of all days, of all days, right? Here's the question: Are you be mobile, or are you going console slash PC? For, PC for, for sure. Um, I think this is definitely going to be more of a pc game than a mobile game because i know i know people are calling it a mobile game just because it is appearing on like ios and uh android stuff and it's for the uh the convenience yeah for the convenience it is free to play also of course um but i will go uh, i will be going pc as i am as i have with um genshin and uh uh star rail just because and, uh, yeah. uh, just because yeah, I, I, I saw, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. So go ahead. Go, 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 go. I was gonna um, also tag on to the PC. Yes. Uh, I believe the accounts are all shared, so you can have it um, linked right to your PC. It to is your getting and... yes. So <laughs> they are getting ready to um like make sure that yes everything is linked, and um they have in fact a launcher now. That ha that will um that will have like all the games in one place, where previously you had separate launchers for each Hoyo game. So now you have just one launcher. You can like just go through the whatever game Hoyo game, and you can launch it from there. So yeah, um yeah, but yeah, I I I think the Hoyo account does work for all those games. So it should, as someone like yeah, as someone who has played Genshin and Star Rail, it should work just fine. Um, so from, from the special program though, they did announce a number of things though, um, with, uh, uh, despite a lot of people feeling mixed about the special program, um, they do have, um, a number of rewards, extra rewards they'll give you out, they'll give out to you for, um, just like playing, joining the game. Um. Let me see. So you get like 70 master tapes, you get promotional polls, um, you get the bang boo uh, banner currency stuff called boo, uh, boo pawns, 
which I know is a funny name, but yeah. Uh, you get to pull um, for like those pets. It's a separate um, currency, thankfully. Um, you have uh, free characters, of course, that are rank A. So basically, they're four stars for free four stars, which will be um, Nicole, Ben, um, Billy, and Sokaku. Sokaku is the blue Oni girl. Um, for those who don't know. And then, yeah, so you get the, you get the gun, the cyber gun guy, you get, um, Nicole and the bear, Ben, right off the bat. So that's pretty cool. Um, as well as Ambi, Corin, and Lucy somewhere in the game, I believe, if that, if I'm reading this correctly. Um, let me see, so... Yeah, they'll, there's going to be, and then, you know, just like any other gotcha game, there's going to be dailies, challenges, exploration stuff, mini games, end games stuff, um, activities, other activities in the uh, the world. Um, your first polls, there is going to be a discount banner, you know, as, like a, you know, like those beginner banners. Um, yeah. You'll get to have a guaranteed S rank, that's the five star, at 50 polls, that's pretty cool. Once you get your S rank, the permanent banner will return to normal with a guaranteed uh, S rank at 90 pulls and an S rank selector at 300 pulls. So that's, this is just like in Star Rail, where um, at 300 pulls, you are given the opportunity to choose the, uh, the the standard characters, right? Any of the standard characters, which is um, basically um, Lycan, Soldier 11, uh, Neko Mia. Uh, Coletta, there's Rena, and there's Grace. Funny that Lycan is the only dude in the uh, t um, in the entire rotation here, but that's how kind of how it works in these games. Um, that's your that's your story banner rotation essentially, and if you want to speak uh, FGO terms. Um, so yeah. 300 polls, I think you can achieve that in six months, just judging from like how many polls they're gonna give you for free, right off the bat. But um, that, that, that definitely will vary depending on if you're a whale or if you're a free to play or low budget, whatever. Well, that's nice that they have that beginner banner, 50 polls, you're gonna get a five star of sorts, or S rank in this case. Um, so. Who knows uh, what I'll get? Who knows what Zao will get? You know, um, I will be going. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, because you know, like how some gacha games they <clears throat> before you fully register mm -hmm. ish, you can do the the sneaky like, oh, I didn't get the character. The leak app <laughs> destroy you know the cache and then redownload it and try again. Mm -hmm. I wonder. I wonder if. This game is gonna have some way to kind of like oh reroll your account people. yeah oh yeah to, yeah. to prevent rerolls hmm yes yeah, uh, hmm I don't know I I haven't heard any word on that but yeah rerolling is if not it's if not it's pretty much like what you get is what you get yeah I'm always the one that's like I get what I uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna stick with what I get what they give me because I'm too late actually too lazy to reroll so to, yeah to reroll because. <laughs> yeah. Um, what was, what's that newest, um, gotcha right now? Something waves? Oh, right? weathering ra waves. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So boyfriend didn't get the, when it first came out, didn't get the character you wanted at first. So mm -hmm. I told him, why don't you just, you know, reroll your account? And he's like, I'm not spending 20 minutes, you know, doing the whole damn shit again. I'm like, ah, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe, yeah. Or um, maybe they are making it purposefully like a hassle to reroll. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, um, they want to, they want to have players, you know, stick with what they got, what they're given. And of course, more incentive to try to pump, pump more money, possibly right off the bat into trying to get, just get the, the five star they want. Uh, speaking of five stars though, um, the first banners, uh, I do have it, I think right here somewhere. Um, let me see. Yes. So the first banners right off the bat will be lucky for me, Ellen and um uh, uh Ju Yon. Ju Yon. 
that's the that's the police chick or officer um well she, ellen will come in first and then and then uh, uh Ju will uh come in after uh at least like i think it's like 20 days or something that's like the standard uh amount of days for each banner so lucky for me i i get to pull for someone from this the the limited five star banner or S rank banner rather. So I'll I'll be pulling for her because I do like her um quite a bit already. Uh and yes, that's the shark shark girl. Um let me see. Is there anything else I'm missing? Uh yeah, of course, you know, yes, it's coming out for uh fourth of July. Um yeah, so right away they'll give you um a hundred free pulls. So that's really nice. And um Let me see. Yeah, the boupons, other rewards, S rank agent or um excuse me, A rank agents for free if you play the game, of course. You can pre download the game from July second. Um yeah. I'm pretty sure uh, throughout throughout its lifetime, they'll give you, you know, the free pulls or whatever for each, like, major update, kind of like with Star Rail. Hopefully, unlike um, Genshin, for whatever reason, they don't still do that as much. Like, they only give you, like, a, barely any, like, uh, free pulls during the anniversary part of things and also the every new, uh, Chinese New Year. They only give you barely anything. Which is still baffling. But anyway, hopefully Zenless Zone doesn't fall into that sort of um, category within Hoyo. Uh, but yeah, I think that's pretty much all the major gist of things. Uh, anything else you wanted to add? For Zenless. Good luck on your polls. Yeah, go look, good luck on your polls. Hopefully you get who you want. Um, let me see. When it comes to this part, the 300 polls, you know, S rank selector thing, um, it really depends, right? Who it, it really depends who I get. It's hard. It's hard to like kind of just say, yeah. but I think I'm looking at either Grace or, um, Rena just because they're like support characters and I am going mm -hmm. for someone like Ellen already. So she's like, you know, Ellen is a DPS. And these two are supports, so I think um, uh, these two. Um, what? I don't like how they have the progress bar to give you the pity pool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. So already because of the launch launch day, you're gonna be like one out of three hundred pulls already. So. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, one hundred out of three hundred pulls already. So yeah, you're already off to a, a strong start. Strong start, but. Mm -hmm. Um, this is the story banner which rotates, so you kind of have like until the end of the banner some runtime to try and get get the character you want. Yeah, well, and then it yeah goes away, right? Well, this well well goes this away. this doesn't uh yeah <laughs> until you hit three hundred this won't go away. So this um, is yes, so. It, it pretty much works like in the star rail like this won't go away until you hit the 300 poles and you will be able to select any of the of the six you see here um s rank agents so so if you didn't so for example you know for you um if you didn't get lichen at any point you'll be able to get lichen um after 300 poles pretty much so you're guaranteed a lichen at some point if you if you still want if you already have like and then you can select any other of the five you know so that's why for me it's a little hard because i don't know who i'm gonna get right off the bat with the 100 free pulls already yeah and especially not to mention you have the the get discount beginner poll right and then you also have um the of course the limited banner the limited time banners with alan and uh, soon after, um, uh, Ju Yan. 
And the pity system, from what it sounds like, is going to be the same with the whole other Ohio games where you are guaranteed to get um, a five star or S rank at 90 pulls. Um, and then if you don't get the, the, the banner character, then another 90, somewhere in the next 90 pulls, you'll get the banner character. That's what I'm imagining how it's going to work here as well. So, um, but yeah, other than that, it's a gotcha game, you know, you're going to have a bunch of waifus and hopefully a good amount of husbandos for those who are, you know, a husbando man, um, and all that fun stuff. Um, let me see if there's anything else I'm missing here. Not, I don't think really. Yeah, I think these tapes are character materials for ascension purposes. If, if I, uh, I'm not mistaken. I don't know about the 1600 um, polychrome stuff. I think it also might be some character materials as well, I, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but yeah. Either, either way, you get, you, get, you get a bunch of free stuff right off the bat. So it'll give you like a good starter kit of sorts, you know. But yeah, right off the bat, man, limited, limited, the limited banner will feature again, Ellen and stuff like that. So I have, um, I'm going to have quite the time. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah. And this is just chart for those who already play Hoyo games. So they they already like put equivalent terms with each other. So like, um, yeah, world level, inner not level and equilibrium level. Um, you're called a proxy in this case in Zenless Zone, whereas um, in Genshin you're called a traveler, in Star Wars you're called a trailblazer, and stuff like that. Um, oh, okay, so so polychromes are your gems. Okay, I see. Yeah, you have Stellar Jade in Star Rail, and then you have Primo Gems in Genshin. Okay, I I see. I definitely get it now. Monochrome is your um actual real money stuff real real money gems okay and then signal searches are your wishes slash warps or your pulls right um master okay so okay so now i fully understand so master tapes are your tickets for polling Aaron Twain fate special passes yeah okay um let me see what's the money currency in this game oh they're called denny's that's that's what it was that sounds funny we're going to denny's guys <laughs> i don't want to <laughs> want to go to denny's though <laughs> no thank you <laughs> i'd rather go to applebee's <laughs> Isn't Applebee's like one of those places that are like bankrupt or something, or is it? Uh, was, yes. Yeah. That's why it's like all right, I'll go to Applebee. Yeah. <laughs> is it a bankrupt? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunate, but yeah. Um. Oh, I guess energy here, or energy in this case, is called decibels. That's actually very interesting. Dots are attribute no uh, ammo now. Um. Anomaly, excuse me. Wow, that's that's a wow. I'm actually glad this chart is here. I can, I have I can like look at this and be like, okay, this is what it is. Okay, effect hit rate is anomaly of proficiency. Okay, okay. Toughness is days. Break efficiency is impact. Missions are commissions. Quests. Okay. Okay. And yes, there'll, there'll be a battle pass, right? For Zenless, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so. And then, and then I'm not going to read all this, but this is like all the elements and all that stuff. Physical, fire, electric, ether, ice. Um, I wonder if there is going to be another element at some point for uh, Zenless.
And it's interesting that they're called agents when it, co when it comes to characters. Hmm. Secret agent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, there's specialties, like, you know, weapon classes, specialty classes. What's the weapon equivalent, though, in this game? What are they called? Oh, W engine. That's what it is. Okay. Yeah. So I'm sure there's going to be a weapon banner of sorts. Try not to pull on those. They're kind of a trap. Unless you really like the character, then okay, I understand. Hopefully the weapon banner, quote unquote, here will work like um, Star Rail, where it's like, just like very straightforward. Whereas Genshin's weapon banner is fucking brutal. Ugh. You have to, um, like, yeah, it has pity, but it's, um, instead of, uh, what was it? One miss, you have to get two misses to be guaranteed that weapon. That's fucking brutal. Um, so that's why, yeah, it's a, it's kind of a trap, but I do it sometimes because I like that character that much. Anyway, <laughs> um, so yeah, pull at your, at your own discretion when, when it's come, when it comes to weapon banner, but if it, if it's, um, if it works like star rail, then, then that's like less of a thing or whatever, less of a bad thing, but it's still always for the, always pull for the characters first and then. Um, whether you want to save or not, that's up to you for more characters, you know? All right. So that's essentially it for the Zenless stuff. Um, hopefully, yeah, like I, like we, uh, like I said, hopefully the Street Fighter stuff does, you know, bear fruit of something. Otherwise, if you just talk, then it's like, okay, you know, hey, it's cool and all, but it's like, mm, I would love to see something come out of it, you know? All right, I think there was one other um, fighting game thing. Oh yeah, this is this is unfortunate uh, news for um, another live action, uh, live service. I was gonna say live action, live service uh, like game. Live action, holy shit! Yeah, <laughs> I know. Live service game, which is a uh, King of Fighters All Stars. They have announced their um, uh, ending of service on. October for um, October 30th of this year to 2024 the app has collaborated with several fighting games such as Sham Samurai Showdown Tekken they're alive Guilty Gear Street Fighter Soul Calibur and Virtual Fighter so yeah you can get, kind of see like the visual stuff right there you got Tekken right you got DOA, DOA Guilty Gear right here Street Fighter 5 Soul Calibur Virtual Fighter, Street Fighter Six. It's very unfortunate, you know, mm -hmm. but it happens. Um, even Bandai uh, cuts ties with um, the Tales um, mobile games like nothing, and that's Bandai, right? Bandai. So yeah. yeah, and this reminded me of that other game. Um, Nintendo had um, that Dragon game. Oh, um, uh. <clears throat> Oh man, well, oh, man, uh, I'm already forgetting. Um, yeah, all I remember is like it was doing well when I first heard, um, last heard of it, and then yeah. all of a sudden it's like, oh, we're we're stopping, mm -hmm. um, we're closing servers down. And it's like, whoa, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, now it's bothering me. Hold on, uh, it was like Gala or something, something with Gala, um, Nintendo die game. Uh, Dragal Dragalia, that's what it was. Dragalia Lost, that's what it was. Man, I'm already forgetting the fucking name. That's how that's that's how sad it is, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like uh, I don't like. Who knows, right? Was this game doing well or not well? Like I don't know. But even even so, like even even if it was doing well, like. Like I mentioned with Namco and like and and Nintendo, as you mentioned, they're just gonna end it just like that. Like they can just end it just like that. I don't know. Move on to the move on to the next thing.
Are you good? Good. Yep, we good. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it, it it um whether the mobile game is doing good or not, it um they just can just suddenly cut ties with it. It's like oh yeah, man. cut ties. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's the you know, and that's the thing with every mobile game is like you don't know when they're gonna pull that plug. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Though luckily with like uh, Fate Grand Order and you know Genshin and stuff like that, um, those haven't gone away, you know. Eventually, yes, but um, not so much with the nature like um, like Tales mobile games and um, uh, Nintendo mobile games even, you know. Even yeah. uh, what was oh man, what was that other like? A number of those Crunchyroll games have been cut off too. So, you know, it's like, it's, yeah, it sucks that, yeah, people put their money into the, those games and yeah, they just get cut off, you know, and all that money just goes poof. So you just kind of go in with the mindset of like, yeah, you know, I'm putting my, my game or my money into this game and my time of two for one day, it'll probably go away and stuff, you know, it's got to have that in mind when you do this sort of stuff mm -hmm. which again is very unfortunate but that's just kind of the nature of the beast you know so very unfortunate that uh, king of fighters is joining that list uh king of fighters all-star will there be another mobile game who knows who the hell knows um let me see if um okay i don't think there's anything other reveling or anything like that so that is it on king of fighters all stars later this year so it very is unfortunate but um also let's not forget they i i don't know why they didn't mention this uh but they also collaborated with um one of the strangest ones, which is uh, WWE. Yep. Let's not forget that. I think someone mentioned it in here. Yeah, yeah. And WWE, yep. Yeah, look at that. You got Orochi and The Rock in the same screenshot. It's so strange. Right. Only in All-Stars. Only in All-Stars. Um... I believe that's it. Let's go ahead and get ready to move on to the next bit here. So let's do um, this. Well, before we move on, go ahead. Someone's gonna be happy when they receive this in the mail. Uh -oh. It's a shirt. Hey. For you. Hey. You didn't have to do that, but thank you. Okay. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. So, we have a famous place called Matsumoto Shave Ice. Oh. Dang. I knew for a second when they launched this, and I had to run over there because they're about to um, discontinue this shirt line. You know, I think you, you deserve a little oh. My God! Oh, oh, where did it go? <laughs> no, I saw, I saw it. It's uh, like a dragon. Oh my God! You actually did it. Oh, you, there's your Ichiban. You actually went out your way to get that shirt for me. Oh my God! You did not have yep. to do that, but I do really nope. appreciate it. <laughs> no, because I also have to buy one for Simmons. I was like, you know, you two guys need it, need this before it gets off the shelf and yeah. never, never return. Yeah, I do. I, I yeah. really do appreciate it. Thank you. So now, when you do come to Hawaii, you can wear this. And I can wear that. Like, where did you get this? Mm -hmm. Where did you get this? Well, it was discontinued. So yeah. fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Pretty much, it's like, well, discontinued. Fuck you. Mm -hmm. 
Because mm-hmm. I think, yeah, their licensing for the game, uh, for the shirt is expiring soon. Oh, so. yeah, yeah. That last hurrah. Yeah. So I was like, Shit. yeah. No, I, 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 I really do appreciate yeah. it, man. Thank you. Yeah. So your package is now complete. I just got to mail it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, if there's anything, anything uh, at evil, I guess I'll try and like DM you like, you want this? You want this? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Don't, 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 don't trouble yourself though. If, if, if you're in a tight spot, don't do, do, do not trouble yourself, uh, man. Like, <laughs> but like, you want this body. <laughs> oh man. All right. What I will say no to, though, is AI art, as the singer did. Um, so let me bring this story up here. Thanks, God. So, People are, are taking a stand. Like, mm-hmm. actually. So according to Anna Playlist, um, Neon Genesis Evangelion opening song singer Yoko Takahashi decided to cancel her performance in the uh, Ikeb- uh, Ikebukuro uh, Anime... Philharmonic Orchestra, that's a kind of a mouthful, due to concert's original flyer using generative AI. Ooh, you know. And there's, there is her original statement right there um, in Japanese. So it was translated by somebody. So thank you. But yeah, um, that is that is pretty based, if I, if I'm, if I so say so myself. So uh, what do you think, man? Finally, yeah, so at least somebody is taking a stand. Is it? Yeah, I mean, uh, we, we we talked about it like I think like literally the last episode, so I'm not gonna go in that bit again. But basically, it is a it is an issue for the creative side of things, you know. But it is going to be more and more of a thing, unfortunately, in the future because corporate loves this whole idea. And potentially to replace people, you know, with these these robots, essentially, man. So it sucks, and it's it's so it's so poisonous to um, what art means, right? To the whole meaning of art, it's so toxic, literally. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm uh, again, I'm really glad to see somebody of some sort of fame taking a stand for it. Um, there needs to be some sort of regulation before this whole thing gets out of hand. Absolutely. And there there, there needs to be like actual you know, artists, you know, looking over these shit, going like, hey, you know, just verifying like mm-hmm. AI art or not. Yeah. Yeah, they need that artist eye, that keen, you know, trained eye to just like, hey, <laughs> the fuck is this? Mm-hmm. And not to mention, there's already software to detect AI art anyway. Yeah. So yeah, um, there's also that too. There's also also that option. But yeah, I mean, it's very unfortunate. Like more of the the freelance workers are kind of like trying to get away with um, using AI AI software to generate their stuff and pull, um, put it out there to get easy money, quote unquote. But um, they're opening a can of worms if they're going to do that because um, you're stealing assets from like different companies and uh, people. So who knows, right? Um, we'll go after you if you do that. So that's a lawsuit potentially waiting to happen. So again, that's why there needs to be some sort of regulation here, at least in the States. And, um, of course, the rest of the world. You know? Again, it's very problematic. Um, always the one. But, of course, it is very problematic for just the, the, um, the passion, the, uh, passionate side of, you know, just art. Right? Alright. So, um, next part, we have a runner. Who is trying out for the Olympics? Um, Noah Lyles. He apparently pulled out a blue eyes white dragon before he uh, he raced. So he's like, you know, kind of like showing his like, you know, nerdy side. He, you know, just 
um, showing that you know he's the be or he's going he's going to be the best kind of thing. Um, nah, he he he's just um low key saying that these guys are third rate runners with a two with a third rate um running shoes. <laughs> oh god, <laughs> <laughs> he's he's Kaiba right now. He is Kai. Yeah, he, yeah. He is, he looks up to Kaiba. I'm sure. Um, and then there is this uh, interview. Or then let's look at the clip first. Why don't we just start right at the top up with the world champion? Here he is, Noah Lyles. Yeah, let's start with the world champion. When he made the world championship, see last year, it was only what 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 um impressed me more though, if it was first edition, mm -hmm, like the mm -hmm, very the, the old first school one. Eye. Yeah, that one. I think that one is like you can get that from like a starter deck or something. <laughs> that particular blue eyes. I'd be, not, like, mm -hmm. I'd be like, damn. Yeah. This man, this man means business. <laughs> Run. If you pull out three of them, that's the that's the that's the ultimate like damn, you know, impressive thing. And then there's this interview right here, very short. So. Where's the card? First of all, the card that you put out. Where'd you, where'd you put, where's the card? First of all, the card that you put out. Where'd you, where'd you put it? Did you race with that card? I did. I raced Where'd with it, it on the side. <laughs> That's crazy. How did it stay up there? It just stuck to my body. Oh, God. This right here. Yeah, what's the meaning behind that? This, this Yu Gi Oh! Blue Eyes White Dragon? I don't know. Oh, you I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> He's like, I don't know what the fuck it is. Okay. <laughs> He's like, I don't know. <laughs> We're not, is that yeah. that popular, guys? I'm sorry, but. <laughs> I'm surprised. I, I'm I'm glad that he held his composure and then go and then just go like, "Bitch, what? <laughs> yeah, you right. don't know about you, you." <laughs> yeah. Don't talk to me. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't interview me. <laughs> Can I have the next one? Yeah. Who knows their shit? <laughs> right. Yeah, it's just so funny, you know. Um, but it is. It does go to show how much Yu-Gi-Oh has impacted um a number of people, right? Like we kind of been saying after um takahashi's uh passing right you know the creator of Yu-Gi-Oh, um when he died pretty much died, died a hero um you know he, he similar to toriyama you know he uh the, the influence right is very much strong all over the world and um yeah we see that with the olympic runner or um someone who is trying to be in the olympics you know who has olympic potential let's just say and by the way, uh, for those who really want to know, it is for the 100 meter uh, uh, Olympic trial. So, yeah. I had to put that in there. That was really funny. You know, it's Blue Eyes, White Dragon, and it's Yu-Gi-Oh! So, I had, to, I had to mention it somehow. It's somewhere. Because not every day you do see that, though. To be fair. Well, also, you don't see every day, though, is a big streamer coming out and um, revealing pretty much what happened, right? When it came to um, that one mysterious ban for uh, Dr. Disrespect, he finally came out um, with the reason why he was banned after four years. So, um, yeah, so previously, he was he just out of nowhere got banned from Twitch. Twitch didn't say why. Um, and yeah, ever since everyone was just like, what, what the fuck? Like, why do you get banned? Right. So it, people were only trying, uh, were only able to come up with theories and stuff like that. But over the years, people were kind of, there were certain people that were pointing out that, um, Dr. Disrespect was talking to, um, a minor of sorts inappropriately over, um, the Tw uh, Twitch whisper, um, side of things. And, um, uh, right after pretty much like w when we were, when we first mentioned it last episode, it was developing really fast and to the point where even Dr. Disrespect himself just came out with the, the, the big, the big, big, big statement. Yeah. So again, this happened, um, or the ban was like four years and, uh, uh, or it happened, uh, and it has been four years since. So, um, firstly, right, 
Midnight Society. This was the uh, studio that was developing the game that, you know, um, Dr. Disrespect backed very much so. And he even uh, co-founded uh, Midnight Society, you know, the studio with a bunch of talented people from the industry of, uh, you know, that is gaming. And um, they had this to say. On e uh, Friday evening, we became aware of the allegation against one of our co-founders, Guy Beam, a.k.a. Dr. Dis Disrespect. Um, we assumed his innocence and began uh, speaking with uh, parties involved in order to maintain our principles and standards as a studio and, and individuals we needed to act. For this reason, we are terminating our relationship with Guy Beam immediately. While these facts are difficult to hear and even more difficult to accept, it is our duty to act with uh, dignity on behalf of all individuals involved, especially the 55 developers and families we have uh, employed along with our community of players. So, um, there was a lot of stir because like, they were just like, hey, where's the evidence? Where's the, where's the proof? Blah, blah, blah right? Um, like, damn, like, that was so quick, you know? This, this, was, this was like pretty pretty much after we talked about the story uh, the initial story right and then the two-time champ the quote-unquote two-time champion himself um came out with this statement right everyone everyone at this point or a lot of the big youtubers had read this statement so i'm not going to try to read every board of it but um but first off you know the let's cut the fucking bullshit as you know there is no filter with me um kind of sets the tone that he is kind of like acting in character when this is a you know it's supposed to be like a serious thing but anyway um this is kind of funny though or interesting because he says a lot of people have been left in the dark about what happened yesterday with midnight society and i and we made a painful decision collectively to have me step down our team is fully, uh, full of incredibly talented and good people that have career, high career ambitions and families, and I'd never want to jeopardize the culture we have carefully crafted, right? You know, he says it was a collective thing, like, we, 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 but um, they're like, nah, we let him go, right? Like, um, he, he, you know, he didn't get it to decide, we let him go, kind of thing. We are just, you know... Um, It, it, it just sounded like, um, like it was a very much one-sided thing. Whereas Doctor Dis Disrespect's perspective, you know, it was col it was a co very collective thing, you know. So that's kind of funny. But anyway, um, but hey, I could be reading it wrong. Anyways, so the most important statement or paragraph is right here, and I'm gonna I'll read it off. Um, were there t Twitch whisper messages with an individual minor back in 2017? The answer is yes. Were there real intentions behind these messages? The answer is absolutely not. These were casual mutual conversations that sometimes lean too much into the into the direction of being inappropriate, but nothing more. Nothing illegal happened. No pictures were shared. No crimes were committed. I never even met the individual. I went through a lengthy uh, arbitration regarding a civil dispute with Twitch, and that case was resolved by a settlement. Let me be let me be clear, it was not a criminal case against me, and no criminal charges have been uh, have ever been brought against me. So um what what do you think what do you are uh what do you make of that just based off of hearing this stuff? This post from what I know or heard or read from this post, like there was a lot of edits that people called out on yes. him for making edits, and then he went back to putting mm. putting back what he originally said. So. Yeah, so yeah, you can even you can even see here it says last edited at this time, blah blah blah. Like, yeah, you can even see like so, I think the edits and such. Yeah. Yeah, so it, it, it's pretty much down to like he's not even hiding it. But he's trying to paint himself as, you know, it was consent, but still it, he wasn't even hiding the fact that, you know, it was an underage, you know, person. person yes. Yeah. So it was like, bruh. <laughs> yeah, bruh, you, you are, this is 
you are just circling the bush mm-hmm. that everyone kind of like already knows and you're just proving it even more yeah with all these edits and mm-hmm. again not even hiding the fact yes pretty much that's pretty much like everyone's con- the, the consensus of everyone reading this is yeah like it's like yeah um and in like and uh you brought up yeah the edit here which is um the fact that he even took out the word minor right at first but people yeah. caught it and then he had to put it back in so it would have been just individual back in 2017 instead of individual minor back in 17 uh, 2017 so it, it it does paint some sort of picture like yeah he was trying to definitely and trying to like soften the blow damage control blah 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 you know what i mean so um it's like bro like you already did did something inappropriate like you know there's there's no like extinguishing or um you know what i mean what's done is done pretty much yeah. and um people in the for the people who are saying oh did he know did he know this was a, a minor this it was did he know that uh, this person you know like was underaged was it disclosed at this point or at that point um if that was the case um uh, and a, a, a lot of people are already saying this right of course it's not nothing new he would have said it he would have said that oh i didn't know right he would have absolutely said it he's not that stupid right that um he didn't know or knew or whatever whether he, he did know or not right he didn't say that he didn't know he just said um these were casual mutual conversations that sometimes lean too much into the direction of being inappropriate it's like <sighs> Oh man, yeah. So it, it it's um that already stuff should be damning, right? Enough to paint him as well a terrible person. Now, if you want to be technical, right? Were there crimes? No, but he even says it himself. From a moral standpoint, I'll have to take responsibility. You know. <laughs> From a moral standpoint, yeah, like it is absolutely creepy. It is it is inappropriate that you're talking to this individual privately that is underaged, right? It, it, this isn't like you know, like in a public place, like you know, you're not you're not talking to like you know somebody's like nephew or niece, like with the different you know that friendly talk, like right in front of their parents or anything like that. This is like a private space. No one else is supervising. This is just is it is between, you know, two individuals, right? And one is, you know, um, lacking experience, very easily like turned or manipulated, right? For a lot of cases, anyway, um, they they just don't have, right? The, the um, sort of the mindset, right? That they have developed. And they're talking to somebody that was thirty five years old at the time. So, th- 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 yeah, th- this is bad. This is absolutely bad, right? Um, but yeah, and, and and to an extent, Twitch, yes, should have been very much more responsible, right? But to be fair, um, they didn't even know this was happening until they actually started investigating um, Dr. Disrespect. And, um, you know, not that I'm trying to defend him or anything like that, but uh, I'm just saying what was said, you know, uh, by other people. And so, um, of course, right, when they first banned Dr. Disrespect, you know, if they right away said, like, what what exactly happened and called him, like, you know, pedof- pedophile, or blah, 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 right, he... He could have um, had a possibility to um, sue. He, he could have uh, taken this to court because um, this is something that they didn't know fully at the time, I believe, or investigated fully um, at the time. 
um of course i could be wrong on that but um but but the, poss but the possibility could have been still there that uh guy beam or dr disrespect could have taken this to court for being called um a pedophile and stuff like that when yeah you know it's like um that was only from a subjective uh standpoint right based off of what they found found and not so much like you know a, a deep investigation or anything like that but either way this could have been taken to court so that's probably likely why they didn't say anything because they wanted to like step over those boundaries right you know they were very careful of what they were saying you know could they have done a better job absolutely but um you know they're just being very cautious for their name and for their brand and stuff like that um very much walking around eggshells mm -hmm. you know and you know they can only do the the obviously right thing by banning the individual right from where it was happening you know on twitch with the twitch whispers and everything so yep. um not yes but still it does make twitch look bad in some way but you know um they didn't know at the time right so um let me see i wish there was oh there you go yeah you can even see right here like the edit history of what he did um so i think this was the first one right so yeah individual minor right here right here's the second one um see now it says with the individual back in 2017 see that's and then he has to, he had to put it back individual minor back in 2017 yes blah 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 and on top of that if that doesn't uh convince somebody already um let me see okay no that's just the result of it there was a um in a, in a, another individual who is a uh i believe a trans sex worker talking to dr disrespect around that same time it says during that time when he was cheating on his wife with not only me a trans sex worker but also another woman and texting a minor he was exploiting me by making me him um, making me give him cam shows with the promise of partnership after the cam shows he went ahead and blocked me and then she's uh, showing off her her dms pretty much um and let me see there was one other thing oops um i thought it wasn't a thread but hold on anyway i believe there is a picture there you go so back in 2017 she met up with uh dr disrespect at um twitchcon and took a picture with him so so it's like yeah you know it definitely shows like they, they met at some point in some time around that same around that time too 2017 mm -hmm. you know so yeah it is further making him look bad for sure but he has the sort of the audacity to be like um saying like I'm not fucking going anywhere. I'm not the same guy that made this mistake all the all those years ago. I'm taking an extended vacation with my family, as mentioned on stream. I'm coming back with a heavy weight off my shoulders. They want to me. They want me to disappear. Yeah, fucking right. You know. There are two two. There's going to be two things that could happen, right? Um. Barely anyone's gonna watch him when he comes back, or he has his like sort of like his circle, 
of fans who are just like yeah. like super loyal to him and that would be enough to sustain the rest of his career but then who knows how long that's going to last right you know it's terrible because he, this guy is a husband he is a father he has a child at least you know but he's doing these things right it's it is terrible it's like not only he's talking to a minor he's he was having that affair right um and remember yeah he, he did have an affair he did talk it out with his wife and i guess that beef was squashed or something i don't know i i but, but she was still around even after that fact but then there's this stuff man it's, man how, how 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 do you come out of that right it's, wow but um yeah um you know it, it it does suck because like a lot of people looked up to him he was like a big big streamer you know he was like playing a character he looked just rambunctious but you know he was in a lot of clips he was um at some point on top of the streaming world right he was at award shows and everything but then behind clo behind closed doors he did these things right he was unfaithful with his wife you know and who knows how many other people he's been sort of like talking to right it's That's, uh, yeah, not great to think about, right? Lack of a better term, but, you know. Yeah, there, there, there was more and more stuff that came out as this was happening. So it felt like just like, oof, you know, like a, a lot of stuff. I liked um, Ackman's statement or video because it kind of like encompasses most people's thoughts about it so let's take a take a look at it what's up everybody this is the act man here and this is my final verdict on the dr disrespect situation as you might have seen i've been pretty vocal about this on twitter and doc has finally given us the truth at long last we know why he was banned and it's not good so first i want to read this part where he says it's the most important part of his tweet. Were there Twitch whisper messages with an individual minor back in 2017? The answer is yes. These were casual mutual conversations that sometimes lean too much in the direction of being inappropriate. I've seen enough to catch a predator to know when somebody is using language to soften the blow, to downplay what actually happened. You know, it's, it's a strategy where you can admit something you did that was terrible, but you can maybe make it seem not as bad as it actually is. Yeah. So he's edited this tweet twice now, taking out the word minor individual and putting it back in. And he hasn't mentioned one very important detail. Did he know the age of the person prior to messaging them or while he was mess messaging them? That's a glaring omission. Somebody who didn't know the person's age or that they were a minor, they would tell you. Mm -hmm. So... There's no excuse for this, okay? Dr. Disrespect in 2017 was 35 and married. There's no excuse. You know better. So he's admitted it. He's admitted it. We have the answer. We have the evidence now. That evidence is a confession. Now, when people use the phrase innocent until proven guilty, there's two courts they're talking about, right? The actual court system and the court of public opinion. The actual court systems found O.J. Simpson not guilty of a double murder. The court of public opinion did find him guilty. Mm -hmm. You and I know he did that shit. Dr. Disrespect has not been officially charged or uh, you know, found guilty of a crime. In the court of public opinion, you and I know he did that shit. So... One last thing to touch on, why was I so vocal during this whole thing? Well, I was afraid history would repeat itself and we would condemn someone based on unproven allegations. The idea of casting doubt on unproven accusations, it, it, like the idea behind that is we effectively are saying 
We aren't satisfied with this answer. We need more information. We want to know the truth. And by saying these things, the idea is that you light a fire under the situation so that eventually somebody comes out with the smoking gun, the thing that blows the lid off this whole debacle, and we can finally get to the truth. I just didn't expect that person to be Doc himself. And uh, quite honestly, I'm supremely disappointed in him. It, it, nobody wants to believe somebody so successful who entertains millions of people could be guilty of doing something that's so fucked up. You know? It, it doesn't matter whether he, he was charged or found guilty uh, in, a, in a trial. Okay? He admitted it. He confessed. He's guilty. And that's fucked up. There's no excuse for it, Doc. Jesus. Yeah. So. Um. Any uh, last thoughts on this situation for the doc? Damn. Damn. I mean, what more to say when people already like called him out and, and stuff? Yeah. Right. 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 It is pretty much done, right? Um, as a result, Dr. Disrespect has been, uh, was, was collaborating with a number of brands across, you know, the gaming stuff and maybe some, maybe some other brands too, but, uh, places like, you know, uh, games such as NBA 2K4, I guess it, it featured Dr. Disrespect at some point. He's getting removed. Um, Turtle Beach, you know, the headphone company or headset company, they already removed him from the, the from their, you know, uh, ambassador list or whatever, brand ambassador. They already removed him and probably his, uh, lineup of whatever products and other such brands are, I'm sure are going to do the same. Pretty much now, there'd be sponsorship and stuff is following suit like, mm -hmm. oh, oh dear oh dear oh fuck and even um uh what was it oh yeah youtube de demonetized his uh the subscription stuff the membership stuff so they already put a pause on that part too and um i also forgot to mention this is from ign by the way Last thing, a former Twitch employee says the miner had informed Guy Beam, also known as Dr. Disrespect, that they were underaged, and Beam continued to send sexually graphic messages to them regardless. So if that doesn't, so if that, if that statement from Dr. Disrespect didn't tell you already, this, this definitely does, that he knew. So... Very unfortunate, very, very disappointing um, that while, yes, technically he isn't guilty, right? He did it, right? Um, he admitted it. So what more could be said? He is guilty in the por uh, court of public opinion. Where in a space where you need people to uh, run your business, pretty much, yeah, you, you lost, you know? He lost, he lost vastly for sure. My heart goes out to his family members and such, man, but shit. And, um, you know, people around his circle, like, you know, the, you got, you got like other streamers who collaborate with him. They're like, nah, man, this ain't it. You know, they're already like turning their backs on him because of course it's, it's bad. It's terrible. But yeah, yeah, that's that's all there is to it, you know. Um, pretty much. Uh, for the major stuff anyway. You now we know why he got banned from Twitch from the from the first place. It's that stuff. So that is it on Dr. Disrespect's this uh situation. And um now we know. It is not a mystery anymore after four years. Anywho, um Lastly, on the uh, frontline side of things, 
So we previously talked about, uh, and you, uh, Zawa here brought this up, um, here about the contest that Pokemon had for the TCG illustration stuff. Um, they actually went ahead and disqualified, um, the certain individuals who, uh, had alleged, uh, had been alleged to use AI to generate their art. Um, now it didn't go into, um, specific detail of who, right? But it's kind of obvious, right? At this point of who got, who got kicked. But the same in here says, we are aware that the select entrance from the top 300 uh, finalists of the Pokemon TCG illustration contest 2024 have violated the official contest rules as a result. Entrants in violation of the rules have been disqualified from the contest. Furthermore, additional artists participating in the contest will be soon selected to be among the 300 uh, finalists. We are committed to holding the integrity of the Pokemon TCG Illustration Contest and appreciate fans' continued support as we celebrate the artistic abilities of the uh, talented Pokemon community. So. Well, see, that's all fine and dandy, but that first sentence actually pissed off a lot of people. Hmm. We are aware. So it's like, so you knew there were AI art in there, yet you still published mm -hmm. um, the AR art as part of the winning circle. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it sounds like right now they kind of backpedal on this, but still it's like, they knew, yet they still went through it. Um, I mean, it could it, there could have been a possibility, and I'm trying to I'm just playing devil's advocate here yeah. that um, they might have been aware after they published the the 300 finalists or whatever that and it shows that yeah true, either true. way either way though it is a bad look that they didn't double check or whatever like you know but yeah either way they acted on it um, you know not that not to say that they you know um, they are. Uh, bad for letting this happen in the first place they are they, they do have to own up the, to the fact that they let it happen in the first place yes whether they um checked on it or not or they were aware before or after they should have they should be responsible for checking up to make sure that the integrity is there you know of these individuals that um or artists that you selected right gotta gotta check on that shit right make sure everything's all good you know by the way yeah um they acted upon it they did their thing and i'm pretty sure um the right people have been outed for um such use right uh for the alleged uh aiR and all that stuff you know but even the fact like even let, let's just take away the whole ai art thing the fact that they just published that no, pretty seen. I mean, you should be. They, they should have been able to see that there were multiple entries of that same name. So, so that of itself already should have been a violation. It's like, what the fuck? How did how did how, how did that slide? Right. Yeah. It's like <laughs> somebody is getting let go. <laughs> somebody is going to be somebody. The, yeah. is more of a team. Mm-hmm. Is yeah. getting let go, or they're going to be part of that now new experiment of uh, putting um robotic eyes or something, I don't know. <laughs> or um, they're just going to be janitors for the building or something, <laughs> custodians. <laughs> oh man! But anyways, uh, glad they uh, were able to act uh, act on that. So, um, yeah, so it even says right here, um, from VGC, while most have pointed to the potential use of AI as the reason for the ban, it's also been suggested that one participant submitted multiple entries under slightly different names, Something also forbidden in the rules. Slightly different names. Yeah, that, uh, yeah, man. And this could have also contributed to their disqualification from the contest. Yeah. So hopefully, they have the uh, they have a better experience 
um, running next year's illustration contest of sorts. Hopefully. This is Pokemon after all. This is like a billion dollar company, right? Um, or franchise, excuse me. Run by, you know, or pretty much Pokemon International or whatever the fuck, right? Um, so, yeah. All right. So, gladly that's been done. Um, let's go into the game's news. All right. So, PlayStation, a uh, quick one, pretty much, has confirmed to be skipping Gamescom once again for this year. You know... Seeing of how much they have to show, like, or have to offer, it's like, I'm not super surprised. And, um, one can look at it definitely, like, looking bad for PlayStation. But, you know, it's like, it is expensive, probably, right? I, I'm, pre I'm pretty sure it costs, it costs money to show off stuff at Gamescom as well as E3 and uh, Summer Game Fest and stuff like that. But, um... Uh, what do you think, um, about this? If there is something, if there is anything to say. I mean, PlayStation, Nintendo, and Microsoft has been doing their own thing, so. Yeah. Yeah, so probably it's just that. Um, inevitable, inevitable thing of, you know, they're just going to do their own stuff now. Gamescom was pretty much maybe that last little ship to just bring, you know, the, those three companies together to show off. Or it could be, again, like PlayStation has nothing to show. Mm -hmm. Ish. Yeah. Uh, as for Gamescom, PlayStation isn't the only company that won't be present during August's uh, convention. In April, Nintendo also confirmed it would be skipping the show. So, um, yeah, it's like while, you know, um, yeah, PlayStation doesn't have so much to show. I think, yeah, it's more uh, definitely also mo uh, more of what you're saying. Like, they're doing their own thing. Why spend this much money when they can we just do our own thing? And um, these shows are going to be inevitably gone. There's just going to be no point to them at some point. That is the nature of these things, right? Look what happened with E3, right? It was the biggest sh uh, show when it comes to showing off games and stuff. But as soon as, you know, companies like Nintendo step kind of away from it in a way... Um, doing the Nintendo Direct ever since, people they were like, you know what? Why don't we, we uh, have our own Direct? Why do this? Um, yeah. Because yeah. also, like, these shows, they're, they're not cheap. They're expensive yes. to have your own slot. Yeah. So it's probably also, like, money management, and it's, like, pretty much, like, yeah, why can't we do our show where we're pretty much not paying for a slot? We're just paying... You know, our company representatives, you know, put together these trailers, mm -hmm. um, getting the prop, you know, getting the uh, the scheduling for what to say and what to show in orders. So uh, it, it's kind of like, again, like, not really a, a shocker. It's more like, well, yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, piggyback off of what you're saying like yeah like it, all they have to do is like pay for their equipment and stuff like that and just maybe yeah pay for the workers and stuff involved with the showing I and mean, that's pretty much it whereas you have to do pretty much that and you have to pay for the space which is like um we saw from like the summer games stuff um one spot can cost like two hundred fifty thousand dollars at least right or around that number if not more you know and of course to the average individual that's a lot of money right but yeah I, but for companies even that's a pretty pretty good uh chunk of change right so it's like yeah why do that when we just have our own little studio and do do the same exact thing we have the internet you know 
and they'll deliver their messages just, just as effectively in a way. You know, it's um, the inevitable, right? So, all right. Um, next up, pretty big, depending on if you're a fan of Capcom's Dead Rising. Dead Rising is coming back uh, with a deluxe remaster. But even though it's called a remaster, it's pretty much um, almost a remake in a way because of um, the graphical overhaul they're doing with their game. So you kind of see that with these screenshots already with uh, from Gim uh, Gimatsu. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> from like average Joe pissed off to yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it it does look kind of funny. Should be the title the title of this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, what what do you what do you think of Frank's new look? We sure that's not the zombie. <laughs> it is drastically different for sure. I, okay, it, it looks graphical wise like wow, much better. You can see it night and day, but yeah, his old face gives more of an appeal to me. Mm -hmm, yeah, I get it. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stop doing that. I'm just going to be like... <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, this person here uh, sort of says it. Like, It seems like they're kind of taking reference from Infinite. The Marvel's, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Unfortunately, depending on how you felt about Frank's fa face in uh, that game. Um, I mean, yay. Yeah, I mean, for the for, if you're a fan of Dead Rising, yay, yeah. But let me see. Let me see the comments. Let me see how how people feel about Frank West is back. W, um, dream come true. Can't we see these dudes again? Spent so many spent so many hours playing the original on 360. Um, so glad to see uh, Dead Rising coming back. Let's go. Never knew how much I wanted this until I seen this tweet. Yeah, looks like people are feeling it. Johnny Knoxville. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Love the franchise. Completely unnecessary, though. Ooh, okay. We got, we got okay. one. All right. Unnecessary, he says. This is coming to Xbox, uh -huh. right? <laughs> damn. <laughs> damn. Damn. Really damn. Mm -hmm. I was going to say also, like, um, I bet you there is somebody, but they didn't want to say it. Pretty much doing the Krusty the Clown um, meme. What the hell was that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what the hell is this? Yeah. It did. It, it kind of just came out of nowhere, too. Like, randomly. And like. that's the... Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the... I guess... Genius, ingenious thing. There was, like, no... Publicized thing for this game. It was just, yeah, dropped. Like, here you guys go. Mm -hmm. Like, the ultimate shadow drop. Yeah, pretty much. And uh, I think the uh, the voice too is, has has also changed uh, for Frank. I'm not I don't know I don't know who is uh, voicing Frank, but I believe that's it's it. gonna be um, he's gonna be voiced by uh, Mr. Phil Lamar. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know you got Keith David, you got Kevin Michael Richardson, or um, what's his face um. Mr. Krabs, uh, uh, fuck. Ron Perlman. What? 
Oh, Clancy Brown. Clancy Brown. Oh, I wouldn't mind. I yeah. wouldn't mind hearing Ron Perlman. Fucking Ron Perlman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, who are we kidding? It, um, Frank's voice is going to be um, uh, Tony Tony Chopper's a uh, Japanese VA. Oh my god, that'd be so odd, but that'd be funny. People, it'd be so odd, but you'd be like, you know what? I can dig it. <laughs> yeah. Somebody um brought up uh, it should have been the actor for Michael from GTA Five to be the voice for Frank, and I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, that could have that could have been a good um replacement. So, hey, I mean, overall um cool for the fans but this kind of just came out of nowhere like damn you know his fucking hairline though man shit <laughs> that's fucking almost vegeta hairline yeah, it's like yeah it's getting to the vegeta territory man like damn but anyway that's happening um meanwhile this is for uh someone like me ish so uh this is speak you know on top on the topic on the topic of live service and mobile games and stuff like that this is finally coming to the west you know and this is very much like you play play this on your phone or um you know uh but this is called uh uma musume and then i can uh i'm i'm actually kind of Kind of surprised, not really, but at the same time, kind of surprised that they're keeping the name Uma Musume, uh, pretty derby. Um, it's finally coming here to the West. <laughs> Somebody said, finally, I can live. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Pretty so, much. It's like, finally, something for me. Yeah. So basically, um, it is one of those like idle games where you kind of just like let it play, you know, you don't really like, you know, like point and click and you know do all this stuff most of that happens when you're training the these horse girls um and they essentially race for you and um hopefully you win and stuff like that so they got a vast assortment and these horse girls are named after actual horses that race um i think in japan or something i'm not sure but um they, but each of them all of them essentially are named after real horses. So that's like kind of the appeal, you know? So very strange, but it's very popular in Japan because in Japan is actually um, uh, horse racing that's popular. You know, horse racing is actually a very popular thing in Japan or more, at least more than one would expect. And, um, you know, they got these like, you know designs you know all that stuff the wife who the wife the uh wife who affied um designs for each of the, the the horse names you know to something like vastly different obviously um for example i just not i'm just going to name off the three one the three of them in the front uh this is silent uh no the one in the middle is special week the one on the right is uh silent suzuka i believe and then um the one on the left is tokai tail so that kind of gives you an idea of you know how they're named what their names are like what the naming convention is you know where they come from what the context is blah 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 so it's a mobile game you know gotcha stuff you know pull for like different versions of these characters so there is going to be a five-star version of Tokai Tail. For example, like a, I don't know, like a red outfit or something that looks very like Phoenix-like, um, for example. You know, of course, there's a summer version, I believe, for these outf for these, um, for these girls. So kind of like, uh, uh, like F-Go. How they're treating their characters like a lot of repeated designs with different like you know like seasons or whatever uh or especially summer summer versions of those fgo girls um or in i guess in um grand blue 
better because uh, Grand Blue probably be a better example because Grand Blue does multiple seasons. Like they do Halloween, they do summer, they do like uh uh the summer fest, like you know, like the where they wear like kimonos or yukata uh outfits and stuff like that. So kind of like that here because it's this is developed by Psy Games as well. So that's why they're kind of like under the same umbrella as like Grand Blue and stuff like that. You know. And luckily, for those who are worried, this will be published by Psy Games themselves, not a uh, country, uh, country, crunchy roll. <laughs> no. Okay, it's okay. You got this, man. You got this. I believe. I believe. <laughs> country roll. <laughs> uh to be fair horses are, are from the country yes anyway so <clears throat> um a lot of people from the west have been playing the jp version through other means for a very long time because it was like you know that popular uh to me um i watch this anime because of somebody i um who used to hang out with us quite a bit um like the show so we watch it together and yeah, I mean, the show, the anime itself is pretty cool for what it is. It's kind of like um, Spongebob with like, you know, day-to-day -day -day, like problems and stuff like that. So nothing like super serious, you know. Oh, so it's a slice of life. But... Slice of life with racing, you know, horse racing kind of stuff. Except with, with girls. Um, they run, right. Uh, and see who, who wins like it's, it's it's kind of you know who who are who are wins this 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 uh distant amount of distance dash kind of thing um yeah so ba basically yeah very much slice of life they go to school and everything they got the school outfits blah blah, blah um and everything they, they train you see the training montages blah 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 like you know it's that kind of anime so yeah light-hearted you know Nothing heavy, not nothing deep, you know. Slightly turn off your brain, kind of, you know. Relax. Uh, it's all in good fun, pretty much. The th other thing about Uma Musume, what makes it a little more unique, but in a, more of like a cheesy slash ridiculous kind of way, is that every time uh, they finish the race, the top three always do a sort of like Japanese pop idol or idol pop sort of musical number or something. They like do like some dance or something. It's, it's, it's strange. I know, but that's what they do. They always have some sort of dance, um, segment with the top three finishers or whatever, the top three winners. So it's, um, you could say a combination of idol, um, gotcha or uh, idol, um, series slash horse girls, you know, and racing. <laughs> so very very strange mix. Like who would have thought mixing idol stuff, uh, horses, and of course waifus would work together quite a bit, you know? Yeah. But hey, it's um been around for a long time. It has like three seasons at least of the anime and stuff. I haven't watched um, the third season, so. And what I've seen, from what I've seen with the teasers and stuff like that, the animation quality is like going up. So it shows, man. It shows off how much they're, how much they're putting their eggs into that basket. And yeah, finally now is coming here to the West. So um, I'll definitely give that a try. And I'll definitely, you know, keep it like, you know, on my phone or whatever. Right. Like um, kind of just one of those things are where I'm just going to play it during work on my break, you know, <laughs> kind of thing. So, yeah, that is pretty much it on that. Um. I guess based off of like the art here or whatever and all I said, do you have any like comments? <laughs> any comments on 
Uma Musume or horses or yeah. Yeah, you kind of see here they they uh they're like on stage or something. But they usually wear like an actual special like um outfit. Yeah, kind of like this. This is one of them. Hmm. You know. And yes, they're all girls. There's no there's no horsemen. <laughs> the headphone rip off from the rip taking off the headphone me. <laughs> what the hell is this? Yeah. yeah. Any comment? What? You do you man. You do you man. <laughs> We do you, hun. Yeah. Now are you gonna go to Anime Expo to grab these uh Oh yeah cards yeah. or whatever? Uh oh it's a demo. You can play the demo, I guess. Oh free sticker, that's what it is. There's stickers. There you go, free free sticker. Yeah, I'm gonna spend Ooh. fucking over a hundred bucks to get in the convention and then get get stuck you, in the line. You get in to 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 play the line the line game. Yes. And by the time you get to the your uh, you know, it comes to your turn. Oh, mm. sort out or yes. no more. No more. Sorry. <laughs> oh. It's like we know that a lot of people will come, but you know, we don't want to you know mass produce shit that you know we know that people are gonna come. Mm -hmm. And we we will say you know there is guidelines of you cannot buy more than one of these things. But you know what? We're we want money, so yes, yes. That is absolutely sums up what AX is like nowadays, unfortunately. Funny. I mean, I saw like mm -hmm. a um anime expo, like um what their merchandise is, like yeah, they're gonna have to sell. It was, it was pretty like some some of it was like wow. I would buy that. Will I wear it? No, but I would buy it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want it. Yeah. Cause there was like a we'll find that website so people can know what I'm talking about. Ah, found it. Mm -hmm. I'll give it to you. Here you go, friend. I probably pretty much would buy the um. Um, the code. Oh, uh, uh, let me, I'll just bring it up here. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, oh, look at those prices, kids. Look at those fucking prices. Well, it's a bomber jacket, so I, I, I can't say shit. <laughs> I'm, oh, they actually have a Jean Bay. That's kind of cool. Jean Bay pajama set, 40 bucks. Uh, happy. Well, I oh. hope because some, mostly old Jean Bays are silk, right? I think so. But it's supposed to be silk. Supposed so. to be. So for forty dollars silk um set, that's pretty much a good deal. That's silk a, yeah, it's kind of a steal. Expensive. Yeah, if it is silk, yeah. But the bomber jacket or, yeah. or um mm -hmm. what, what what's the other one? It almost like silk, but it's not satin. Uh oh man. It, it's that other material that's yeah. In. It could be polyester for all we know, but I don't know. Ew, that, right? That <laughs> I would buy the fucking show fan. Like, that fan looks pretty. Oh, yeah, that one? Yeah. It does look pretty cool. Yeah, 10 bucks. That's not bad. But, wait, is this, um... Official. The merch booth will be cashless. Visa, Master... Whatever, blah 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 cards. Apple Pay will are accepted. Blah, blah. No returns, no refunds. Wow. So it's like, uh, excuse me, there's a tear, there's a big ass hole in the shirt. Too bad. <laughs> Too bad. Go find out. Oh, uh, what are they called? The cosplay. Um. Oh, so the repair shop. Ad. The repair shop. Yeah. Yeah. The cosplay <laughs> repair shop and have them just sew it for you. <laughs> oh, that's fucked up. <laughs> Oh man, what the? I think a lot of people need to buy the hot, uh, the hot chimaki because you know that 
um, go up. Oh, yeah. right here, yeah, yeah. By the Maki, because you know it's LA. You kind of want to. Oh yeah, your... it's hot. Yeah. Yeah. So by the Maki and then by the Chopin, you're you're golden. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. There's a shot glass. There's a therm thermo or whatever steel uh, stainless steel bottle. Pink stuff. I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind the umbrella. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you kind of need it too in LA <laughs> on that day. <laughs> you're going to be standing outside for a pretty good amount of time <laughs> trying to get in. Uh, oh, yeah. Looks nice. Like, yeah, admittedly, I like the it does look nice, but I'm pretty sure they won't be selling this online, unfortunately. And I think that's the point, right? Let's try to get people in as much as possible. We're let's let's crowd let's get people into this notorious known convention center that can't even you know hold a lot of people no. from what i heard yeah i mean same thing with um san diego comic-con is like you think from again what what i heard you think it's big enough to you know house guests and you know go con goers no you're pretty much shoving people into like I'm oh, sorry, Dean can pretty much. Mm -hmm. Oh man, yeah, pretty much. Which now, I now now saying that it's like how how is evil it's gonna be because it's gonna be at um, the Las Vegas Convention Center. Yeah, hopefully it won't be too rough. Is it gonna, yeah, hopefully it's not gonna be too rough, and if it is gonna be a little pack. I'm probably going to be up and bring a mask, you know, mm -hmm. just in case I, I, I pass by some, um, potent players. Yeah. Potent players. Yes. Yeah. So I don't have to be like, if I'm like walking with the dudes and we pass by, I'll be like, mm? yeah. <laughs> I would like, can you give me your arm? Why? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, what was it? Um, I would probably, if I do go, like, ne uh, starting maybe next year, I'm, I'm not, no guarantees, but maybe next year, I'll probably wear a mask for most of the time in the convention. If it's, like, outside the convention, then not, not so much. <laughs> but in the convention, more like more likely. But um, if I'm taking, if, if there's, like, you know, people who, who want to take pictures or something, or if we were going to take yeah, a picture take together, off, yeah, I'll take it off I'll, at that moment and I'll, you know, take the picture. Yeah. Oh no no! What you need to do is um get those masks that has your your oh. your mouth. <laughs> just wear like that, so you don't need to take it off. You can just be like, <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, that'd be so I creepy. Mean, that's, that's one way to not take off your mask for sure. a picture. Just have <laughs> just have your mask already with the print of your mouth. Sure, that's one way to do it. But man, it'd be, be fucking hilarious. You have it upside down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, oh like, my god. Like hawk hawk your your mouth. Your mouth. <laughs> your mouth. <laughs> your mouth. Your mouth. <laughs> yeah, move it up, man. <laughs> it's too low. I'll be like you be like, what? What what? <laughs> oh yeah, it's like upside down. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> I'm frowning. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm frowning. It's like I'm frowning. Your nostrils at us on your chin, you idiot. <laughs> uh, that'd be so funny. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I mean, either way, like for evil. No, if you find if you find like a B and B or you find like another place, if he's going next year, or you need, or if you're going and B's not going, but you need a roomie. Yeah. Yeah. You know, hi. Yeah. I'll pay. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> but for like anime expo and stuff, I think from what my friends told me, you're better off going by yourself. Or you meet your friends there. Don't go as a group because it's gonna be miserable. Yeah, either way, yeah. Uh... I guess that's a way to look at it. Uh, 
And for those who are going to AX, good luck. Good luck. Good. Good luck. Oh, and don't don't bring outside food because they'll eat your food. They'll take uh, it away. At least, yeah. Food. Bring bring water because it is gonna be hot as fuck. This has already been pretty hot as of late, so it's been, and it's only probably gonna get hotter. See, and speaking of which, what is my temperature right now in Hawaii? Huh. Eighty-three degrees. Right now. Right now. Damn. That is quite the warmth. Um, but what is hot, though, is what we're about to uh, talk about in the visual entertainment of things. Now, while it's not Godzilla, but it is the... Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is the cast... At least some of the cast for the season, uh, second season of One Piece, uh, Netflix or Netflix is One Piece. Uh, so over the past few days, there has been a plethora of sorts. So let's bring up all those tabs. Hey, mama, mama, everybody. He's yeah. In. Yes. <laughs> um, most of them are from the Japanese side of things. I think. Oh no, no, the actual One Piece Netflix uh, Twitter. There is one from Netflix themselves that I found. Um, I guess we can start off with this one. Uh, so we have, I'm going to butcher the names. So I apologize. So Callum Kerr is going to be, be playing Smoker. We have Tashigi being played by Julia, uh, Raywald. Um, Wapple by, being played by Rob Coletti. And, uh, Dalton being played by Ty Keog. Um, hopefully I'm getting those right. But yeah, you can definitely see their face to kind of get an idea of what they're going to kind of look like. Yeah, you know, in a way, you got to kind of, kind of get a little little preview, you know. And seeing that they're already covering some of the uh, Drum Island people. Yeah, they're going to cover. They're definitely going to cover um, Chopper's story for sure. Yeah, that's what I I mean, that's what we're hoping. Like, yeah, yeah. Chopper has to be in this. Mm hmm. To which, again, like, how far is this season going to go? Yes. Well, how many, like, how condensed mm -hmm. is this season going to be for, you know, ex trying to expand, like, you know, seeing Chopper, Nami fucking, you know, getting sick. Yeah. Yeah, people are still saying, Jim please, Jimmy Lee Curtis as... Dr. Yeah, uh, Corral, yeah. Yeah, uh, Kureha. Um, like, Jamie Lee Curtis is, is like one of those actors, you know, what role best fits an actor? It's like her, <laughs> Jamie yes. Lee Curtis as Dr. Like, Kureha, yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This one is def uh, a little more surprising because this is also covering Whiskey Peak with Mr. Yeah. Three. Um, Miss Valentine, Mr. Five, and Mr. Nine. Mr. Three, though, is being played is, by, yep, uh, is Polka Dot Man, pretty much. Which, which in my head is like, you know what, he fucking matches because the mannerism mm -hmm. that he can achieve through. So, yes. Uh, they, I, I just want to know how he looks with the hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, th the three hair, yeah. We got to see that happen. David, the. Maltian, uh, Smalkian. I, 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 I am butchering that name. I'm sorry, but that, but he's gonna come Polkadot. after you now. Yeah, he's gonna come after me. He's gonna but, do this to you. Yeah. Pol he's Tonight gonna shoot he's the, the polka dots. Yeah. <laughs> he's gonna pretend you're his mom and just kill you right there. Oh my god. <laughs> hey, hey, what? You see that? Mm -hmm. That's your mother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Jazra Jaslin is uh, playing Miss Valentine. Uh, Cameras Johnson is Mr. Five. Daniel Lasker is Mr. Nine. So um, we we do have one big name for sure. Uh, right, you know, so far anyway, Mr. Yeah. You know, Polka Dot Man right here. You know, um, David. Yeah, David right here. 
I think this is honestly a pretty good pick, though. Yeah. Yeah, like you're saying, you're, it, it is a pretty good pick, right? Even not, not just for like the face, but mannerism wise, how he acts, I think it'll definitely be a match for um, Mister Three, or at least will fit Mister Three. Yeah, Mister Three's like own personality and mannerisms. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, I can't say the same for the three. I don't know these actors, or even in fact, Mo, uh, the other four as well, as we talked about so far. Um, up next, we do have people from either the grand, uh, the red line, Crocus right here, playing being played by Clive Russell, uh, Dory, being the giant, being played by um, Warner Coaster. Groggy being played by Brandon Murray, or Brandon Murray, depending on how you uh, pronounce it. You know, this is the part that it's going to kind of like make or break this season. Yes. Is how are they going to portray the giants? Yeah, I'm just going to do like a, a a CG of them, right? Big CG thing, kind of like what they did with um, uh, that one character from, was it uh, Infinity War? Was it? In, in Marvel or Avengers Infinity War, which one? Thanos, yeah, when Thanos met the uh, what do you call this? The for the blacksmith, oh, um, Peter Dinklage's character, uh, yeah, the dwarf, yeah, yeah, the the big, yeah, mm -hmm. I think I can see that if they if they do the reverse of you know, the reverse of making someone small, yeah, I can see it that way. Yeah, they, yeah, they, they shrink the, the, the reverse yeah. um, mm -hmm. perspective, the mm -hmm. reverse perspective. Yeah, yeah. So like, rather than making these guys large, they're just gonna shrink down the the people uh, around them, perhaps. Or just do forced perspective. Or like forced perspective. Yeah. Or they're gonna just or probably yeah. Or maybe do like uh like Game of Thrones did like yeah make them big but they're like. Like ridiculously fucking big, you know. Well, I was gonna say, or they can just do tokus tokusatsu style mm. uh, Power Rangers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Let my monster grow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're just gonna cut back and yeah, they're just gonna cut back and forth, you know. But they're never on the same screen, kind of. But like, kind of, yeah. they kind of are. But yeah. <laughs> Watch fucking Dorian Brogy like fight, fight like Megazord style. <laughs> so be so funny. <laughs> you see the 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 sparks of the explosions for no reason. It's like, well, wait a minute, am I watching a Ultraman or am I watching like Megazord? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but um, yeah. Again, so far the cast looks like yeah, it's a pretty the fair cast. And, uh... It's a pretty fair cast. Right, nothing like, hmm, you know, I'm not questioning anything, you know. The big one, of course, is um, uh, David here, you know, Polka Dot Man as Mr. Three. That, yeah, I, I think that's a pretty <sighs> nice pick. I'm trying really hard to go through my head archives. Mm hmm. Bon Chan is not here yet, right? No. Like, during the he game. was well Fuck. he was well in the alabasta arc yeah yeah Fuck, i really want to just see bon chan already they could tease him at the end so we could see him but they'll... which again yeah. the, per the perfect casting for bon chan will be fucking jim carrey, jim carrey. Like, Fuck him. yeah perfect casting yeah i can definitely imagine him as a uh, bon chan for sure yeah, I, I like if they, they did somehow make that, I, I will cry man tears. Go like, mm -hmm. he did good. Yeah, he was already Dr. Eggman, so, or Dr. Robotnik, right? Um, So, off the checklist, right? So, uh, Bonchan will be pretty cool, right? So, that's pretty much, we kind of get an idea of where they're going to cover the arcs. Yeah. Of like where it is. Yeah. So what I'm thinking is that because we all thought that Ella, you know, Alabasta is going to be the uh, season two. No, but it Alabasta's, now looks like it's season three. It's going to, 
yeah, it's going to be season three or season two is going to be like the last few minutes of the season is that we see, you know, Alvesta over the horizon. Yeah, I think I think that and we, then, we address that early on yeah, or and, uh, previously. Yeah, previously. And then that's when, you know, as we were like doing our tinfoil hat, mm -hmm. it just cuts to like crocodile in the shadows. In the shadows. Laughing. Yep. With the rest of the agents who have yet to see, which is like Mr. Four and Miss uh, Merry Christmas, and then Mr. One and uh, Double Finger, and then uh, Bone Chan. That's the they're, they're the only ones that, uh, or they're the ones that were also well into um, the Alabasta arc as well. There will also be teased, I'm sure, along with uh, Crocodile slash Mr. Zero. Which uh, now the question is when they do that because you know that's how they they tease Smoker at the end of um, season one. So yes, his back. Pretty much, pretty much. So for you, how would you want Crocodiles, you know, to be revealed? Same same way, or just like the camera? I think like zooming in in that, um, like half half of his face, you know, with the cigar, that you know, you know, you know. Kind of oh, and he does his and he does his iconic laugh. The and laugh. Then that's when it just says um, to be continued. Mm -hmm. To be continued or to be in season three or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so pretty much, yeah. Another, gonna, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, another. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, I guess ending shot for mm -hmm. season two. Um, just have um. Just have a have Vivi and um stuff, just riding, like riding across the plains, mm -hmm. and then she just stops for a brief moment, and then she just removes her, you know, the hood, and then it's just like Vivi, and then that's it. It cuts. Well, because well, um, Wednesday or well, Miss Wednesday slash Vivi actually comes in quite earlier in the thing so yeah. she actually comes in when uh oops um crocus shows up because remember um yeah. mr nine she yeah so mr. It, nine and, uh, it could yeah. be like showing like you know she was going back to alabasta to you know, just inform mm -hmm. people and then that's why and she would just have her own her actual get up instead of miss wednesday's get up Hmm. hmm. Oh, uh -huh. oh, oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Okay, I see what you're saying now. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that would be pretty neat. Um. Yeah. So pretty much, all I was gonna say is that they're gonna they're definitely covering the red line. Um. The what was it? The garden of something. Um. I forget what it was called. It was like some something with garden. Garden of Eden, was it? I don't know. Um, and then Whiskey Peak. Oh, the Little Garden arc? Little Garden, that's what it was. Little Garden. Right? That's, yeah, that's um, in between the red line and, uh, or Whiskey, yeah, Whiskey Peak is in between the red line and um, Little Garden. And then after the little garden, it is um, Drum Island. So definitely they're going to cover uh, Chopper. Yeah, Chop Chopper's story is going to be last. That's going to be the last part for season three. Or season two, excuse me. And then season three will be definitely like just... I hope they do all Alabasta to really expand upon it. And then season four will be um, Jaya. And then um, I guess... Um, Skypea. Yeah. But this is me. Mm -hmm. For Skypea, I hope they cut out a, some things in Skypea that some of those episodes you didn't really need for Skypea. I do have to uh, look back on that. But yeah. I, I can kind of see where people are going with that. Because I, I, I heard a lot of people say that stuff. Like, oh yeah, there's a lot of like stuff in between uh, Skypea or whatever. That was like 
deemed not necessary. It'd be also funny, like somehow, like again, it, it looks like this the Netflix series is gonna start off well. Just hope, you know, knock on wood, it doesn't fall into the fucking Netflix curse mm -hmm. of after four seasons cut. Yeah. Like, no, you gotta actually. He's like, you started this, you gotta commit. Mm -hmm. It's oh. it is a question of how far though, because are they really gonna go all the way to um Wano? Yeah, Wano. Wano or even like Egghead? Like, damn man. Because in my my reality, in my mind reality, yeah. So if this show goes through the um, Netflix uh, curse, gets cut at. Season four. season four, but Amazon or A24 picks it up and then just, yeah, you know, continues from there. Yeah. The arc I'll be like interested is Impel Down. Like, show me that. I need to see that prison. Yes. Yes. I need to see Eva Chan. Yeah, Eva, <laughs> yeah, Eva and Bon Chan. Remember, like, Bon Chan makes his last stand. Um, and then Magellan. Uh, I, that much other fight. If if the effects are done nice, it's gonna look really nice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, look really cool for sure. And then we all know what happens after that arc, where people say it was the make or break for them because. Oh, beautiful uh, is here. Oh. He's like, look at this nerd. <laughs> Who the fuck? Where? <laughs> look at this nerd. <laughs> oh man, that's funny. Hello, beautiful. But, but again, like, just... I hope it does well. And does yes. not get the Netflix curse. Yeah. It definitely is hard to say, but I cannot see it uh, go all the way to where it is right now. It has to stop somewhere. I think if they want to stop, to kind of like say like okay we made it here um <laughs> we can continue or just stop here is um pretty much that last scene that we see with um uh, let's see laboon oh uh, yeah like if they can go all the way there and just stop right there where they see Lassie's um Laboon, that that'll be fine because they are like venturing to the next area. So uh Beautiful says Skypea is a safe bet to end it. See, that's what I think too, because that's funny. And you brought up the uh the season four curse thing. Cause that's pretty much where they have to go with season four is Sky that's Skypea. Unless they have the gall to just like stuff um, Alabasta in four episodes and then the other four or whatever <laughs> is going to be just Skype here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, they you kind of can because what Luffy was like incapacitated for like what three, three episodes because of the first fight. Yes. So I can see. Yeah, you can cut down some of that. That's where oh the, that's where the anime had its break. Oh, yeah, I guess that's true. So could be. But that's the thing is is now from season two and onwards, are they following anime time? You know, like timeline or manga or timeline. production timeline or manga like production timeline? Yeah. I mean, my my happy place would be um, when they set off away from Laboon so we can be like reminded it's like a certain someone hasn't seen you yet turn the ship around <laughs> see that would suck also though because if they do stop at season 4 that means they can't really show Brooke for sure um, yeah makes a ball and whoever, they, and whoever they get for Brooke wouldn't have the chance, you know, to sing, sing the lovely song. Yeah. 
Unless they just for, uh, force Brooke into that arc for somehow or some reason, because you know they they're, they're gonna end the show anyway, so might as well like go fuck it, you know, speed run it, speed run it. Then that would be interesting to like wrap it up for the Netflix uh, One Piece. Yeah, Brooke. Yeah, Brooke and Chopper is going to be the hardest thing to to keep animated. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Because, like, you have to also think about, like, the more, the deeper they go to into the story, the more of this, like, the more crazy the worlds get. Especially by the time yeah. they get to Egghead, because there's so much in Egghead, kind of. I don't think they yeah. actually, like, you know, press on and they go all the way. Mm -hmm. I think the most nightmarish character... That's probably going to kill the animators is fucking Caesar. Gas. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, like, I will be fucking livid. Yeah. Being like, okay, you're going, you, your team is going to animate Caesar clowns. Uh, cool. That's yeah. it. Gotta make yeah. it look real. Gotta make it like he's flowing. It's like, well, don't forget that technology improves, so hope maybe by then yeah. they can uh, have an easier time animating smoke and gas and stuff like that, but yeah, probably make its own ending. Yeah, true. They can, you can just always do that, definitely. Everyone dies. Every <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Finn. Yep. Finn. Finn. <laughs> when was the last time you heard a show using Finn <laughs> as, a, as a way to end things? That's like a long time ago, it seems. Yeah. I was about to say Courage, but I was like, no, Courage had like the spray can and it says end. Yeah. And, but and... yeah, good good casting. Mm -hmm. It's just how how are they gonna look? What how are the costumes? The costumes, the lighting and everything. Yeah, the makeup, right? How's that gonna come out? Especially these two, right? And... Especially these yeah. two giants, for sure. I'm surprised they're not honorary members yet of the crew. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But also, I, I do want to see the interactions with um, Prokas and... Um, was it Sanji or was it um, Zoro? They were, like, bicking, bickering at each other. Well, it was first Zoro and then Sanji kind of get got into the argument as yeah. well. So, it, that, I know you're talking about that. Even this person um, pointed out, like, I want to see this moment in, yeah. in live action. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, old man, which way is it? Yeah. <laughs> you stupid asshole. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I see the... um. The sub I I can like see the subtitle too like or, I can I can like remember it too, but like yeah. um Crocus is like um someone is going to die today and, and, and the what do you call Nami and Usopp were scared like Aah! and then Sanji's like he's like all right who, who you know like what are you saying man he's like what are you talking about it's me <laughs> Crocus like it's me he's gonna die I'm old and Sanji's like. <laughs> <laughs> it's like why are they talking like that? <laughs> uh, uh, but I can see with Chopper, yeah, the CGI is gonna either be hit or miss on mm -hmm. him. But wait, 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 wait we Chopper's gotta... a puppet. <laughs> it's like a mu it's a muppet. <laughs> what if Chopper's a muppet? <laughs> I was gonna say maybe they could find like. A real, you know, deer, and just have him in his deer form. Yeah, and then just put the up. cap on. It. Put the cap on, and then when he talks, then just you move know, the you mouse. Yeah, the, so... the weird ass CG fucking that'd be mouth. So funny, but I understand. But yeah, that'd be pretty funny. Man, that'd be like the a big what the fuck for uh, One Piece fans for sure. It's gonna be it's gonna be that uncanny valley shit, like. Chopper will have the sonic teeth, <laughs> ugly sonic teeth. Hey, Beautiful says he'll take it if it, if Chopper's a Muppet. <laughs> hmm. 
<laughs> oh, did you see what he said earlier? He says, I gotta share a room with this jackass. <laughs> it fucking kicked me out, Dan. <laughs> oh, Go by <man>. yourself. <laughs> Go by yourself. <laughs> Man, if they actually do make Chopper a Muppet, that'd be so funny. But I can't say I'd be surprised because of how like a pain in the ass CGI would be. Like to keep it going too. But hey, if it succeeds that big or that much and they have the money for it, then hey, you know, they could maybe keep up with it, you know. Try, I mean, they have to be pretty clever to, uh, like, just put Chopper in only the scenes he needs to be in or something. Whereas they're just not going to go willy-nilly and have Chopper in every fucking background shot, you know? And such like that. Um, but you yeah. Know, I just know also. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, with the whole Netflix thing, they could be speeding it up, as you said, for for some stuff. Yeah. So on, on the off chance, we might also say, see Miss O Sunday on the off chance. Well, we will because they have to because it's um, they go into the little garden and the little garden <laughs> is uh, after um, Whiskey Peak. And um, Whiskey Peak is where um, what's his face die or dies, quote unquote. Um, Igaram, Igaram, who was um, Vivi's guardian, he tries to be a distraction, and then uh, he his boat explodes, and then Miss All Sunday was there. She's like, oh, you know, haha, it was me or something, whatever. And then Vivi gets pissed, and all that stuff, and that's how, yeah. And that's how, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. She did that right, right away. I, I would've been like, oh fuck, dude, she's fucked up. And now, um, and that's. I mean, she doesn't have that nickname for nothing, right? The other nickname yes. starts with a D and ends with a child. This is, yeah. <laughs> yes. And and for those that did watch Wano, now you know why she has that. Uh, or read Wano. Now mm -hmm. you know why she has that. Um, nickname. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we we'll, we we'll, we'll, we will see uh, Miss All Sunday slash Robin for sure. Uh, the casting will you're show that to, you're not supposed to know her name, her true name. Yeah. Yet. Spoilers <laughs> for <laughs> no. spoilers for a twenty like twenty plus year series. Whoa, you know. Well, I mean, it's just a person's name anyway. It's not not significant yet. <laughs> What's your name? <laughs> Who are you? I'm Nico. No, I'm Nico. I'm Nico. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Getting all that sand to be animated is going to be a pain. Yeah. No, that's we yeah, we did we did mention that previously too with crocodile sand. That would be well. Not to mention like the the desert itself is going to be quite. Nah, it, it, it's it's fine. They're gonna hire the same crew that um M Night Shyamalan Ding Dong did for Avatar with the rocks. <laughs> Wow. Like, you're going to see Crocodile doing a big sand move, but it's just going to be like a speck of sand going like... Pocket <laughs> <laughs> <Hockets> sand. <laughs> like it's sand. Oh, oh my eyes. <laughs> I mean, yeah, imagine um, if they, like, somehow dumb down uh, Luffy's defeat in... Um, uh, Alabasta, you know, when he when he first got his ass kicked by a Crocodile. Yeah. Instead of getting stabbed by the hook or whatever, they just, he just throws pockets in his eyes. But apparently he's like super powerful sand, so his eyes are just like, ah! Like, he's like blinded for like a long time. And that's, that's, that's their way of incapacitating Luffy for those many episodes. Instead of just being straight up fucked up. <laughs> now that I think about it, if they do go, you know, go the distance, who can they have to play, you know, like Ace, Black Gum, Teach? You're right. 
Yes, you're right. Ace is, yeah, Ace shows, no, he he definitely does show up in Alabaster, so we'll, yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah. He definitely will so not be showing, like, yeah. Oh, let's say tease him. Let's say tease Ace, just like sailing in the sea, like randomly, you know? Yeah, just show 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 his back. Yeah, you know, the show. tattoo. Yeah, that's, a, that, that's all you need to show. Yeah, the boat, and then show the boat too. The shit, little the, the little like, boat. Like again, around. some it, it, this whole series is pretty much hit or miss with the um, costume design. Like season yeah. one, the best costume that we agreed on was like what Shanks and Mihawk. Uh, uh um, I think Mihawk. For me, definitely, when it came to like actual translation to the to the, the big screen, for sure, or TV screen, I just say. From page, pay, um, yeah, from page to uh, TV. TV, yeah. I think he came Shanks out like grew on me. Yeah, Shanks, yeah, like definitely started to grow on me at some point. Yeah. I just wish he was, the actor was more drunk. <laughs> yeah, maybe at some, <laughs> maybe at some because that, that's pretty much what Sh Shanks is. It's like, what Shanks? What is your 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 best quality? I can drink mm -hmm. a lot, a lot. It's like that's it. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, that's pretty much what we got for the One Piece stuff. Really, um, the only th one thing I wanted to add. Is that I believe this actor is British or um, he has an English accent, so that would yeah that would add something for Smoker, you know. I mean, like again, each character is, is supposed to be you know represent a country. Yes, I believe so. Although, yeah, Tashigi, I'm not sure if she is supposed to be like full Japanese or like half or I don't know. They never like I really think disclosed she's supposed that. to be inspired like be like half. Half Japanese and then like half like something else maybe. He never disclosed. He, I, uh, he never. Or disclosed. or you know to be on the safe side, she could be just Okinawan, like maybe yeah inspired. Yeah. No idea. When it comes to Tashigi. All right, so let's wrap it up with the other bits. I think they're not. Uh, super big. Oh, oh man. Um, Batman Cape Crusader. Did you see this? The uh, the video or trailer for it? I've seen it, but I didn't hear it. Like we only, I only okay. seen like, like a, a like a whoosh, and then I was like, oh. yeah. Well, it's coming to Prime Video, or yeah. So for those who have Amazon Prime, you're able to see it. So that's actually really good for me. But this is like essentially the same crew ish or same director as the animated series you know the classic batman animated series from the 90s mm. you know that we know right that we grew up with um and if you look at yeah and, yep and if you look at the the overall like style and everything it's pretty much that very similar obviously looking a little more modern and clean but other than that it's pretty much from that era i'd say And um, the other, the only other thing, of course, is like you know the some of the CG effects with like the TV screen and like the vehicles and stuff like that. But everything else is very much like from the past. But with that little, yeah, little bit of that modern touch. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. So with Harley Quinn looking like that, I, people were losing their minds and not. Oh, and that's not right. Yeah. Good, good yeah. way. And mm -hmm. I was like, I was like, you realize that she's supposed to look like. Harley Quinzel, a fucking gesture. Yeah. That's what her original design was. Mm -hmm. She's not supposed to look like daddy's girl that, yeah. you know, the um, Suicide Squad and the Suicide Squad. Yeah. Um, you know, portrayed her as. Yeah. So I don't like, know. Like, again, yeah. nothing, nothing against Maggie, you know, Margaret. But she played an excellent Harley. It's just that I'm tired of seeing that Harley or that yeah that. that version of Harley yeah yeah I want to see gesture just mm. give me that back hmm. 
Now, obviously, yeah, this isn't going to be mean. with Kevin Conroy, right? Because because you know he's already long. He's pretty much passed away, right? Like long past. So he's going to be a different actor. So um, they haven't shown Joker, I believe, right? So who knows who is going to be playing Joker in this one? And it might as well be somebody different because Batman is already different. So you know, I'd be, I'd be. I mean, I I wouldn't mind. Um... What was it? Um, Randy Jones from the Batman, you know, with mm. the asylum looking um Joker. Mm -hmm. I, I liked his voice, his Joker's voice. Mm. Yeah. Then you have, um, what was it? John? John DiMaggio? Mm -hmm, DiMaggio, yeah. Uh, as the uh, yeah, as the other Joker from um, Under the Red Hood. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of people forget that this is also um, I forget produce. Oh, I fucking hate how fucking Two Face looks. Oh, that is so, yeah. Such a, a bland, boring portrayal of of um fucking Two Face. Two Face, yeah. I do like the classic um, Catwoman suit. Mm -hmm. So it looks like the, um, they're taking some liberties from past Batman's, like yeah. Brave in the Boat and such. Like yeah. Oop. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Essentially. It uh, yeah. It, it looks good. It looks pretty pretty cool that they're bringing it back from the '90s to here. You know, so I'll definitely give this a watch for sure. Cause I love the uh, animated series for sure. When it comes to Batman, like, honestly, that's how I was, uh, I was introduced to Batman. It's this sort of uh, Batman. Yeah. So, you know, obviously with uh, Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill, right? Those were Batman and Joker for me. You know, they were Batman and Joker. So, yep. Bringing, bringing this back, man. Pretty cool. I like it. I'm all for it. All right. So, um, that is that for the Caped Crusader. Last on our list. Last is... one. Pokemon. Not just kidding. No, it's just a mention for, uh, Kinikuman, uh, Kinikuman Perfect Origin, uh, arc. Oh, that's different. I thought it was Perfect Chojin arc, but anyway, Origin arc. Is going to be on uh, Netflix July 8th. So for those who are fans of K K uh, Kinikuman, are going to be pretty, um, you know, hopefully be satisfied because, you know, Kinikuman has not been getting the, the limelight for a very long time yeah. in the anime space anyway. It, it has been going good, uh, going in the manga side of things, but it's been super, like, on the down low. And... Um, you know, it's it's it, it was at one point very popular and stuff like that, along with the other uh, shonen series. Um, this, I believe, was also in the '80s, like early '80s, if I'm correct. If not, um, maybe barely in the '90s. But yeah, it was around nonetheless. Um, influence it. Uh, it was inspired by uh, Ultraman because you can tell by the head. <laughs> Um, but you know, um, the muscle buster or Kiniku buster was kind of like back in the day or, uh, for us would be like, you know, the Jojo meme reference stuff. But back in the day, a lot of people were doing the, the Kiniku buster or muscle buster as like that meme equivalent. Yeah. A lot of characters were doing it even, you know, fuck it in Tekken King does that move. Right. Um, it, it was it was that kind of um popularity with uh Kinikuman at one point kind of the same with um kenshiro from piss the north star people were doing a lot of the, the voice that kenshiro does when he whoops people's asses you know the bruce lee thing you know what yeah. you know that part that that also was like very quote unquote memed uh many times along with the 
Kinikuman's um, Muscle Buster. So, yes. Um, I think this is a good for the fans. I think it deserves it, honestly. But it is odd that they are starting from here. Because this is supposed to be like the final arc for um, the classic Kinikuman anyway. It was a big, it was a big Japanese wrestling meme that actually got big overseas. Yeah, yeah, and then they even had like the uh, the toys uh, called the Muscle Men make it to the overseas as well. I believe at one point they're kind of like these like rubber figures that you can collect from. Uh, I think they were from like Gotcha machines or whatever those capsule machines. I think so. That's yeah. It was well known at one point, but then it kind of like got taken over by. You know, everything everything else that we know. Pseudo sequel to the um Oh, that's right. See that see see uh Ultimate Muscle is kind of a weird one because Ultimate Muscle the first season I believe was Produced and whatever by Japan, right? That's the Japanese side of things. But I think season two was uh, ordered by four kids. So that was technically not Japanese produced, but uh, Japanese animators were brought in anyway. Mm -hmm. Thus why um, the budget was quite, quite different. And then if you notice with the opening and everything, it not and I'm not even saying like the English opening, the Japanese quote unquote opening for season two was quite different and basically reused a lot of footage because of the budget, right? So it kind of showed you like a clue of what was the nature of that show was like production wise. But first season of Ultimate Muscle slash um, New Generation or Kinikuman new generation or second generation um, had that awesome opening, you know, hustle muscle and everything. Uh, if you look it up and watch the opening, yeah. It's like one of those openings where it's like, yeah, this is like it defines what anime openings kind of are. Kind of thing. Anyway, so um, oh yeah, fighting food on, yeah, it, it was kind of like that same situation too uh let's see that's pretty much it right so yeah oh no i'm happy to see kinikuman getting some sort of attention especially from netflix so hopefully it'll bring in or revive interest from people and maybe we'll see something from there uh was there anything else you wanted to uh throw in before we sign off You want to say you want your shirt now? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a cool shirt, man. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Good for you. Um. So, Evo is that much closer, man? We're already like hitting July, pretty much. By the time this episode airs, it's going to be July. Um, we've already like a beautiful children. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah, and then evil. I, you're... I'm so glad that this this upcoming work week I don't work on Fourth of July. Nice. Uh, I believe I'm off <laughs> Fourth of July as well. So I already told my boss if she tries to call me in, <laughs> my phone will be silent. Silent. <laughs> you will be uh, a wall. <laughs> no, I will just stare at it, going like, "Oh no, it looks like they need help." <laughs> and it just you just flip that steak on the the barbecue. <laughs> oh, no, I'm gonna be pulling pulling shit on Zen lesson game pissed oh off. Oh my god, that's for like, nighttime. I'm gonna be like, yeah, that's right. Zen lesson is coming out I'm that I'm day. I'm gonna be like, God, 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 fuck. <laughs> I don't want her. Fuck. I don't. Want it's her. gonna be that curse. Gonna yeah, be a I'm gonna I get, get everyone in that band there, in that banner except for him. I get, and I'm gonna be like, I get Lycan, you get Ellen. You know what I mean? That's how it's gonna work. 
no, 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 we're not doing that shit again. <laughs> we're not doing that shit again. <laughs> we're not doing that. Nope. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're either gonna get like uh, Ellen, Rena, or uh, Grace Howard. <laughs> And I'm gonna get like a, Ben. Can I have Ben the bear instead, please? Well, Ben. Well, well, Ben's gonna be free, so it doesn't matter. He's a four star. So that's already fulfilled for sure. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, before we sign off, I wish to all who plays Zenless Zone good luck. Hopefully you get the waifus you want or her husbando. Because there's only one male five star, right? For right now. Um and um have a good time in, in the game. So hopefully it'll be good. The story isn't super deep like Genshin and the Star hmm. Rail. So who the hell knows where that's gonna go. And hopefully the end game will be fun. But I think the honeymoon will be pretty, pretty, uh, will be pretty fun. Oh my god, you're gonna do it. Jesus fucking Christ. What? It's the summer banner. Is it we an actual new then. summer banner? Because I don't, I don't care for Not yet. Not banner. yet. You gotta wait till, um, August. During the anniversary. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's in August. Because yeah. during the anniversary. During the anniversary. Oh, no, 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 never mind. That's in July. That's right. They always yeah. do it. Yeah. During the anniversary, it's um, Proto Merlin. Oh, boy. Or Proto um, Lady Avalon. And then mm -hmm. um, Summer Scotty, which everyone's gunning for. And Summer um, Ibuki. Oh, boy. But for me, because anniversary, it's Mother Moon. Moon Mother. Mm hmm. Okay. Oops. So, uh, before we sign off, hope everyone, uh, hope everyone in the states have a happy Fourth of July, happy uh, Zenless Zone Zero, and that's pretty much it. So, thank you very much. We we'll hope to see you all in the next one as Zawa continues his uh his polls, I guess. Not even pulling. We will. We're so endless. No, I, I have to save money.